Welcome to the Fantasy Audiobook. Marvel. Hero System. Obtain Teleportation Ability at the Beginning. Chapter 61. Since Howard's death, Obadiah and Stan have been using Howard's best friend and best business partner as an excuse, using their shares in Stark as their confidence, covering the sky in Stark Industries with one hand, carrying Tony did quite a bit of dirty informal arms dealing. Regarding Obadiah's behavior, although Leo reminded Tony, the hands-off shopkeeper, Tony cared very much about this uncle who had watched him grow up, so Tony just warned him and verbally promised Obadiah after that, he didn't pursue it any further. This laissez-faire behavior made Obadiah more courageous. Two years ago, I don't know what method he used to take 20.00% of the shares of IO Group from Tony. What I want to explain here is that these shares came from Emma in order to obtain Stark Industries. 7% shares delivered to Howard. After getting the shares of the EO Group, Obadiah began to contact those shareholders who held the shares of the EO Group, trying to unite to obtain greater benefits, but for the shareholders who have always held 60.00% of the EO Group as far as Emma and Leo are concerned, those shareholders simply cannot afford to make big waves. This time, it was apparently yet another shareholder meeting spearheaded by Obadiah. Hall pushed open the door of the conference room, bent slightly, and made a gesture of, please, which attracted the attention of everyone in the conference room. Then, under the watchful eyes of a group of shareholders, Leo walked in leisurely. Emma, looking at Emma who was sipping coffee sitting at the long conference table, Leo called softly and sat beside Emma. Come here, do you want coffee? Emma asked with a soft smile. After seeing Leo nodding, he didn't mean to pour a cup of coffee for the shareholders present, but turned to Hall and said, Please, Hall, give Leo a cup of coffee. Okay, Hall nodded, glanced at those overwhelmed shareholders with a sneer in his eyes, then turned and walked out. Dogleg, Obadiah cursed in his heart, he didn't have any affection for Hall, a loyal supporter of Leo and Emma. Looking at the six shareholders at the conference table, without any intention of saving face, Leo said in a cold voice, if you have anything to say, say it. Hearing Leo's words, all the shareholders' faces trembled unnaturally. They naturally knew about Leo's identity. If Emma is the queen of the EO group, then Leo is the only one who can be compared with Emma. Apart from this, Leo has an even more important identity. The founder of the development of the main product of the EO group, the life-healing instrument that no one can crack so far as Leo's greatest confidence, let alone the weapons developed by Leo later, so, if it is not called by Obadiah, they are some timid quails in front of Leo and Emma. Ahem. Seeing this, Obadiah pretended to cough twice, and after making the embarrassment on his face sink a little, he piled up a false smile and said to Leo, Leo, I'm Tony's uncle, and you are Tony's friend, so I'll call you nephew, I. Quote dot. Leo, who didn't want to listen to nonsense to occupy his time, sneered when he heard this, and directly interrupted Obadiah's words, you really care about it? Who admits that you are my uncle? You give you such a big brother face. You, even Obadiah, no matter how deep his thoughts were, hearing Leo's slap in the face made him instantly furious. Seeing this, Leo sneered again and again, his cold eyes swept over all the shareholders, after seeing them startled and lowered their heads, the conversation turned to Obadiah again. What are you? Don't think I don't know what you are thinking. I don't care about the things you did in Stark, but if you dare to reach out to Eo, I will chop your hands off, but don't cry out for pain. Leo spoke so ruthlessly that he didn't give Obadiah a chance to speak at all. Hearing what Leo said, Obadiah's face was gloomy, knowing that today's purpose had already been wasted before he spoke, and after glancing at Leo coldly, slammed the door and went out. Cough, Mr. Leo. Um, my child will be late for the parent-teacher meeting today. If I don't go, I'll be late. I'll leave first. Seeing that all the sponsors of this shareholder meeting have left, one of the remaining five shareholders brought the middle-aged man with glasses pushed up his own glasses, found a lame excuse and hurried out of the meeting room. He didn't have the guts to face Leo and Emma, and walking by himself was the wisest choice now. Seeing this, the remaining shareholders looked at each other, and couldn't help calling Obadiah a waste in their hearts, but at the same time, they found various excuses with a smile on their faces, and walked out of the door in despair. In this way, this menacing meeting ended in such a farce that the purpose of the meeting was not even stated. When only Leo and Emma were left in the meeting room, Emma stood up, walked behind Leo with a bright smile, 
and gently leaned on Leo's shoulder, saying, You treat Obadia, aren't you afraid that Tony will be angry? Besides, he hasn't said anything yet. Holding Emma's hand, Leo smiled indifferently. What can he do, doesn't he just want the permission to sell our weapons? But he seems to have made a mistake, our EO group is not survive with weapons. The IO group, which started with life healing instruments, is not like Stark Industries, which is dedicated to machinery, weapons and energy, but has always focused on mechanical medicine and biopharmaceuticals. As for weapons, it is only Leo who in his spare time, he made some small things based on Heimerdinger's knowledge. Although these small things were unexpectedly favored by the military, they were only sold to the military because of their affection. The main products are the concussion series of weapons and the tiny Hextech missiles that can be launched by hand. Emma turned around and sat on Leo's lap. After putting her arm lightly on Leo's shoulder, she said with a smile, the things you made are unexpectedly popular. That's why I don't want to continue making weapons. This world is already messed up. Leo smiled, and lightly pinched Emma's nose. After clapping Leo's hand, Emma frowned and said, if it wasn't for Obadiah's mental shield made by Howard, I would have used my ability to control him directly, and he would still have a chance to jump around. Leo raised his eyebrows, a little surprised. Don't you think that if you use your ability to directly control it, there is no challenge for you? Emma raised the corner of her mouth lightly, leaned into Leo's ear and whispered, I've been tired of playing for so many years, and simply achieving the goal directly is what I'm pursuing now. Besides, my ability has already broken through. Level 4. Leo was surprised. Hum. Emma was very satisfied with the shock on Leo's face, raised her chin proudly, and praised me quickly. Seeing Emma's rare cute expression, Leo praised himself without hesitation. Amazing. Hearing Leo's words, Emma said seriously, in this way, I can stand by your side when you are fighting. Hearing this, Leo's face was moved, and he was deeply moved. Two days later, in the evening, at the awards party for the Apex Awards. Tony, Stark, Dreamer, Genius, Patriot, from Boyhood. Looking at the introduction on the huge screen, Leo wondered if he heard it wrong. Then I muttered in my heart, this is Tony. Emma, who was sitting next to Leo, seemed to see what Leo was thinking, and the corners of her mouth twitched. Leo, hearing someone calling him, Leo turned around. It was Lieutenant Colonel Rhodes who asked Tony to invite him to attend the award presentation two days ago. Rod, for Rhodes, although Leo and him are not friends, but because he is the contact person of the military and IO group, the two are more than an acquaintance and less than a friend. It's right to ask you to present the award to Tony tonight. Otherwise, he would have run away. Pointing to Tony who was honestly sitting with Obadiah tonight, Rhodes smiled. Rod, this time I'm not only here to present an award to Tony. Leo raised his eyebrows, pointing out Rhodes' reason for coming. Leo has always been impatient with these business matters. Hee <laughs> hee, hearing what Leo said, a big smile appeared on Rhodes' dark face, and he said to Leo, you are still so quick to talk. Rhodes paused for a moment, with a bit of consideration asked in a tone, one more thing, just want to ask if you have developed any new weapons recently. No, Leo said truthfully, this is really a pity. Rhodes had a look of pity on his face, and when he wanted to say something, Leo's name came out on the awarding platform, obviously Leo needed to go up to present the award. What's the matter, you can talk to Emma. Leo smiled apologetically, stood up, and stepped onto the podium amid applause. If Tony is a flirtatious talent who has countless scandals and has given countless women romantic fantasies, Leo is the best man who is dedicated and unique, has zero scandals, and makes countless women rely on him for life. Both are equally talented, equally youthful, and equally charismatic. Looking at Leo's deep blue eyes under the spotlight, all the women present couldn't help showing fascination, but when they thought of the noble and glamorous Emma who was like a queen beside Leo, they couldn't help but show their faces. The color of loss, how can they compare with such a woman? They said Tony would be very happy if I presented the award, so I'm here to make Tony happy. Leo looked at the helpless Tony with a faint smile, and waited for the sound of applause because of Leo's speech after it came down, Leo slightly raised the volume and said, Apex Award. Tony, Stark. With a look of laziness on his face, Tony walked up to the podium, hugged Leo, and whispered in Leo's ear, if I don't come and make you lose face, what will happen to you? Quote dot.
Didn't you already guess the answer? Leo's mouth curled up, and some dangerous lights flickered in his eyes. Forget it, I don't want to be chopped into coke by you. Tony rolled his eyes, took the trophy from Leo's hand, and began to give his acceptance speech. Thank you my best friend for giving me this, surprise. About this award, I want to say that I deserve it. It is still Tony's style, and it is still arrogant, but there are still countless people cheering for such words. Amidst the applause, he waved his hands and walked off the stage neatly with Leo. You're right this time, such an occasion is really boring. So let's have some fun together. Hearing Leo's words, Tony patted Leo's shoulder with a sloppy smile on his face. Leo was really speechless about the temper of Tony, his friend. I want to study my armor recently, so I don't have time to waste. Leo said the truth, and directly rejected Tony. Please, brother, can't you give those women who are staring at you a chance? You are Leo, the only one here who can compare to my Tony. Those women look at you hotter than me. As soon as Tony finished speaking, Emma walked up to the two of them with graceful steps, looked at Tony who was winking at Leo, and said angrily, who are you giving a chance to? Seeing Emma, Tony instantly became serious, and praised earnestly, Emma, you are still dazzling. Without looking at Tony's seriousness, Emma smiled gracefully and looked at Leo. Rhodes said that he invited you to go to Afghanistan with Tony tomorrow to participate in the weapon experiment. But I declined. Why, Emma, could it be that she refused because of going with me? Are you afraid that I will take away your Leo? Tony raised and lowered his mustache, with a sad expression on his face. PFF, because Leo doesn't have time, he plans to retreat for his armor tomorrow. Emma laughed amused by Tony's expression. Retreat, Tony blinked, this new word, after Leo's previous explanation, he understands what it means, the kind of life that is devoted to research all day, without beauties, and without fine wine is super disgusting and fearful, so after showing Leo a look of how pitiful you are, he licked the corner of his mouth and walked towards the blonde beauty who was staring at them. He's been staring at us all night. After Tony walked away, Emma pointed to Obadiah who was staring at them with cold eyes in the distance, with a bit of displeasure on her face. Then give him a surprise and make him happy. A smirk appeared on Leo's face, and his silent thoughts swept across Obadiah's waist, and then gently pulled down, all of them dressed in clothes immediately. The fat buttocks of Spongebob's panties are in front of everyone. The accident happened, and the whole scene was startled, and instantly became silent. Spongebob Squarepants your hobbies are really special. Seeing Obadiah who raised his pants angrily, Leo chuckled. PFF. As soon as Leo opened his mouth, the whole quiet scene seemed to be detonated by Leo. The laughter from all the people could almost blow over the roof, and then they cast pitying looks at Obadiah. Obadiah, who has always maintained a good image in front of people, had encountered such a thing there, was so angry by Leo's words that he almost spit out old blood, and went like this, pointing at Leo with a trembling finger, with a look on his face in a panic, he pulled his pants tightly and disappeared in front of everyone with swift steps. Tomorrow this Spongebob Squarepants will grab the headlines of all the newspapers. PFF. Emma laughed out loud when she heard what Leo said, and after giving Leo a white look, she took Leo's arm with a happy mood and said with a smile, let's go. Those you need the experimental materials are all ready. Hearing Emma's words, Leo's eyes were burning, then start working tonight. I can't wait. Today's New York is full of cheerful laughter early in the morning. Unlike the heavy topics in the past, everyone today cannot do without Obadiah and SpongeBob SquarePants. Obviously, the most embarrassing moment of a big man is worth everyone's time. Take it easy all day long. Looking at the newspaper in his hand, Obadiah looked angry and tore it to shreds, spilling it all over the office, but through the shredded newspaper, a yellow sponge face with a smile was still faintly visible. Obviously, Obadiah has expanded his popularity. Suppressing the anger in his heart, Obadiah looked at the sun rising outside the window with a distorted expression. Bone voyage Tony. The deep voice slowly spit out from Obadiah's mouth, coupled with Obadiah's cold gaze, it made people feel chills. At this time, in Eo Manor, Leo built an underground laboratory. Leo closed his eyes tiredly and rubbed his forehead. After he came back from the awards party last night, he plunged into his laboratory and has been working until now. Regarding the starry night armor, 
Over the years, although Leo's continuous improvement has greatly enhanced the ability to resist impact, but other than that, there has been no major breakthrough. It wasn't until recently that Leo saw the isolated biological cells in a research institution of the EO group that a bold idea appeared in Leo's mind. He wants to use his own cells as the model to create a battle armor with biological and metal properties. Heimerdinger's memory is full of a lot of knowledge, and one of them records the knowledge of a mad scientist transforming himself into a biomechanical man named Victor. Although in memory, Heimerdinger did not have a good impression of this man named Victor, but out of his thirst for knowledge, he still recorded information about Victor. Victor used artificial mechanical organs to replace his own body organs to achieve the perfect combination of machinery and biology, which inspired Leo a lot. Of course, Leo did not want to turn himself into such a special human beings should take advantage of this to study at a deeper level and combine cells with metal elements. In the entire laboratory, Leo was the only one. In order to concentrate on his research and succeed in the experiment as soon as possible, he closed all communications and blocked the door of the laboratory, leaving only enough daily necessities and food for himself. During this period of time, I lived in the research room, and this is the retreat I talked about with Tony. Such a monotonous life is definitely worse than death for the flamboyant Tony, but for Leo, it doesn't matter much. Of course, in addition to the research experiment, Leo also arranged for himself a thing other than research, as the fun of research in his spare time, that is to use the acquired telepathy ability to communicate with Zan Sol Dao. Researching, resting, eating, and communicating with Zanpakudo. This monotonous cycle of work and rest takes up every bit of Leo's time, and this kind of life has passed for nearly half a month. In the past half a month, Leo has produced every kind of magic alloy in memory, and the next job is to test the fusion of each kind of metal with his own cells. Although it sounds like this is completely impossible, magic science cannot be speculated with ordinary knowledge, can it? Finally, after spending more than 10 days, Leo found the matching magic alloy. After Leo watched the fusion of a little black metal with his own cells, he showed excitement on his face. This is the most critical step, Leo murmured, and after letting himself relax for a long time, he started the next work, depicting the magic array and magic symbols on the bio-metal fused with cells and metal. How big can a cell be? To engrave magic symbols on this cell-sized bio-metal, if Heimerdinger sees it, he will definitely scream crazy, impossible, etc., but Leo's mental power makes this kind of thing happen possible. Leo controlled his condensed mind power to the extreme, and turned into a carving knife many times smaller than a cell. With the help of the instrument, after amplifying the biometal, he began a long journey of characterization. The spirit can only be portrayed in a state of extreme concentration, so this is not an easy task. As long as Leo's spirit fluctuates slightly, then Leo's previous efforts will be wasted. Puff, there was a slight sound, and Leo rubbed his forehead, looking at the biometal that was destroyed again, and planned to take a rest. Such a state of incomparable concentration is really exhausting energy and energy. Of course, in this week's portrayal among them, Leo's manipulation of mind power is much stronger. During the break, Leo habitually began to communicate with his Zanpakudo. For more than a month, with his continuous communication with Zanpakudo, the connection between the two became much stronger, and even Leo sometimes he could still hear Zanpakudo's soft whisper. Although it was still vague, Leo still couldn't hear clearly, but it was undoubtedly Zanpakudo's name. Half an hour later, just as Leo was about to end this communication, a tender and clear voice appeared in Leo's mind. G.U., named Kang Lei. Hearing this voice, Leo's body was shocked, and the color of surprise shot out of his eyes. As Leo knew the name of Zanpakudo, the original language of Zanpakudo was imprinted in Leo's mind. With a flash of his body, Leo appeared directly in the icy and snowy Antarctic. Looking at the empty pale ice field, the corner of Leo's mouth curled up slightly, and he said the liberation language, and then a raging blue thunderbolt came from Leo appeared on O. Half an hour later, after experimenting with the power of Zanpakudo, Leo teleported to his laboratory with a relaxed smile and continued his experiment. Perhaps because of the excellent mood, this rune writing was unexpectedly smooth. Three hours later, all the runes were drawn, and Leo smiled contentedly looking at the tiny dust-like biological metal. Super speed, super strength, resistance to gravity, self-healing itself, 
healing others, incomparable sturdiness, automatic energy absorption these are the magic runes that Leo bestowed on biometal, and because it is biometal, this biometal also has a biological the most basic feature is reproduction, that is to say, after absorbing enough energy, this biometal will reproduce like a living thing, from one cell to two cells, and then to three. Eventually, it will become more and more as many as Leo needs, and then become Leo's armor. Put the biometals into the pre-prepared tanks filled with nutrient solution. In order to speed up their breeding progress, Leo used his mutant ability electric energy to start, feeding, these biometals. Biometal, since it has the word, bio, it naturally has its own life, so as Leo continued to release his abilities, the biometal began to proliferate slowly, and after a while, after it grew to the size of a thumb, it unexpectedly appeared a change that Leo didn't expect. Hungry, hungry, a vague thought appeared in Leo's mind. Leo was startled, and stretched out his hand from the nutrient solution, looking at the biometal floating in the nutrient solution, with a look of surprise on his face, this is from this biometal. Leo was a little uncertain, and with a look of hesitation, he put his hand into the nutrient solution again. Some electric energy was emitted from his hand, and then a joyful emotion appeared in Leo's mind, feeling like a puppy being fed, exuding pure intimacy towards Leo. It's really this thing. Leo looked at the black biometal, his face uncertain. Although the thinking ability of this biometal is still very weak, there is no doubt that it has broken away from the category of tools, which makes Leo feel he had the idea of destroying it, but if he destroyed it, Leo felt very distressed. After all, it was something he obtained after researching and experimenting for a long time. With this kind of contradictory mood, Leo fell into thinking. After thinking for a moment, Leo let out a long breath, and said to himself, destroy it and then create it. What if this is still the case? Thinking of this, Leo gritted his teeth and said to himself, it's a big deal, I'll destroy this thing when it's out of my control. Putting the hand with the electric light into the nutrient solution again, watching the rapidly proliferating biometal and the increasingly clear thoughts and emotions, Leo observed carefully until the biometal began to roll in the water after the size of a palm get up and start to change your form unconsciously. Seeing this, Leo took out the biometal and with the mentality of trying, passed an idea, and then the biometal was like a jelly, after flicking it twice, according to the idea Leo passed on, Leo's hand it was wrapped up and turned into a black gauntlet. At this moment, Leo's telepathy felt a very weak thought, attachment, happiness, admiration, like a baby who can only express his own emotions, pure and flawless, and Leo felt like a baby just like seeing my parents. You don't think of me as your father. Leo was stunned for a moment, and then he was relieved. For this biological metal, isn't Leo who made it his father's identity? Leo smiled helplessly, the electric energy on his body gushed out quickly, and after the black gauntlet absorbed the energy, it spread and increased in value at an extremely fast speed, covering Leo's whole body after a while. Then a problem arose, because of the increase of biological metals, the weak mind could no longer control all the biological metals. In the end, except one of Leo's arms was still covered with biological metals, the other biological metals went directly along Leo's body. His body slid to the ground, and after only one breath, he lost his ability to move, turning into tiny black particles as if dead. Grievance, feeling the emotions coming from the biometal consciousness, Leo froze for a while, feeling amused, and began to think of a solution. It can't be controlled because its thinking is weak, so strengthen its thinking power. People's thinking ability becomes stronger with the growth of age and knowledge. For it that can grow up with energy, the concept of age does not exist at all, so it can only try knowledge. Thinking of this, Leo began to use his telepathic ability to slowly contact the weak consciousness of the biometal, and after that weak consciousness sent a thought of attachment to Leo, Leo began to try to express what he thought in his heart. Passed a number to the past, and at the same time responded to this weak consciousness telepathically, reading it repeatedly like teaching a baby. One, a few minutes later, as Leo continued to teach, the weak consciousness repeated the number Leo gave. Seeing this, Leo was very happy, and started his own teaching time. The first number took six minutes, and the second number was directly shortened by half. Until the end, this consciousness learned faster and faster. Finally, seven days later, after this weak mind had grown to a level comparable to that of a five or six-year-old child, it sent out a, full, 
thought. Is there still time to be full? Leo smiled. Master. A childish metallic voice sounded in Leo's mind full of anticipation. Starry night. It's me. Biometal responded happily upon hearing Leo's words. As the sound fell, Leo felt that an invisible connection had been established between him and the biometal, starry night. His attachment and admiration exceeded his imagination, and even Leo felt that as long as he ordered a self-destructive thought, this starry night would definitely destroy itself without hesitation. What a surprise! Leo laughed happily. Battleframe mode. After this thought flashed in his mind, Xingye, which tightly covered one of Leo's arms, moved, and covered Leo's whole body in just a blink of an eye. The black mask that covered half of the face, but the difference lies in the completely enhanced power. After testing, the strength of Leo wearing Starry Knight has reached an astonishing tons, and his speed has also reached the speed of sound, and now Starry Knight's ability to withstand impacts has become nearly ten times stronger than before, reaching to the extent of hundreds of tons. Nodding in satisfaction, following Leo's thoughts, most of the armor covering Leo's body turned into black powder and fell down, leaving only the black gauntlets on his hands at first, and then the black gauntlets. It changed into a palm-sized black metal again. This is. Leo was a little puzzled, and Xingye seemed to sense Leo's doubts, and then began to explain to Leo, but Leo was a little depressed when he heard the explanation process, but thinking about it, it was only five or six years ago. At the age of thinking, Leo no longer asks for anything. Finally, amidst the confusion of explanations, Leo understood. Keep it the size of a palm, and it will have the autonomy to completely control its body and move freely. For example, now, the biometal Starry Knight has become a palm-sized, ah, black cat. And after it exceeds the size of a palm, it will lose its ability to act independently and become a good helper with thinking ability, such as Leo's armor, or other things. So in order to maintain the ability to act alone, Xingye will automatically kill those unused and redundant biological metals. Because Starry Knight itself has the ability to absorb energy, when it becomes a battle frame, it can use the energy it usually stores to achieve rapid proliferation, and it can become a battle frame almost in the blink of an eye, but if it exceeds the quality of the battle frame in terms of scope, Leo needs to provide energy or absorb energy himself to do it. The difference between these two energy supply methods is that if it is provided by Leo, the proliferation speed is completely controlled by Leo. Incredibly slow. Now that the purpose of this, retreat, has been achieved, there is no need for Leo to stay in the laboratory anymore, so Leo called Starry Knight, and after the palm-sized black cat climbed onto Leo's shoulder, Leo O walked out of the lab where he had been there for 43 days. What? Tony was attacked and disappeared. As soon as he walked out of the laboratory, Leo heard the news, and immediately frowned, feeling very worried. We also only received the news a week ago. Stark and the military jointly blocked the news before. Now the I.O. group is doing its best to search for Mr. Stark's news, but there is no good news coming. Okay, I know. Leo nodded, and after Bell went down, Leo contacted Tony's personal butler Jarvis. Jarvis, is there any news about Tony from Stark? No, Mr. Leo. For some reason, Leo actually felt that the intelligent program of Jarvis had a faint taste of sadness. Shaking his head. He shook the thought out of his mind, and then asked Jarvis to send the location of Tony's accident to his mobile phone, and then called Emma. Emma, Tony, I'm sorry, Leo, because I didn't want to disturb your experiment, I didn't tell you this news. No need to apologize, Emma, I understand what you mean, after all, my strength alone can't play a big role in finding Tony. Leo felt warm in his heart for Emma's thoughtfulness, and then became worried asked. Have you found any latest news from Io's side? Because the Middle East is too chaotic, the search work is going very slowly, but I have contacted Rhodes, and he will contact us as soon as he has news. Thank you Emma. Leo felt Emma's exhaustion from the phone, and it seemed that Emma had spent a lot of energy on this matter recently. Although Tony is a bit out of tune, he is also my friend, isn't he? I'm planning to go over there to find traces of Tony. Although my strength is not suitable for finding people, sitting like this makes me even more anxious. Do I need to make arrangements for you? Emma asked softly. No need, I will search as the Black Emperor. After finishing speaking, after hanging up the phone, Leo's eyes flashed, and he disappeared with Starry Night. In the dark cave, there was a disgusting sour smell. 
Under the dim light, Tony swallowed the mashed potatoes he had eaten for more than a month, intending to take this opportunity to recover his strength. I really want to eat a cheeseburger. Tony chewed the mashed potatoes in his mouth fiercely, and spat out a pebble hidden in it because he didn't wash it clean, with a sad look on his face. That's really a luxury. Ethan, who was sitting opposite him, licked the corner of his mouth, showing a longing smile. Ethan, Tony's current assistant, his cellmate, and his savior, it is this man with old-fashioned glasses who installed an electromagnet connected to a battery on his chest, so that those who drilled into his body, the shrapnel that would stab his heart at any moment saved his life, but now he has got rid of the battery that made him unable to move, and replaced it with a small arc reactor that constantly emits blue light. If someone had told him before he was kidnapped by these terrorists that you would live in a dirty cave and get along with a man day and night, he would definitely give that man a VIP gold card in the hospital and let him go check your brain. But now, looking at the arc reactor on his chest, Tony sighed, remembering what Emma told him before leaving, that Leo was going to, retreat, for experiments. I'm in retreat. Tony smiled self-mockingly, looked at the welding tools scattered on the ground, and suddenly gritted his teeth and said, it's a pity that you are still called the Black Emperor, and you haven't found me for so long. Who is he? You have a lot of resentment against this person. Ethan put down the iron rice bowl in his hand, wiped his hands, and slightly lifted his glasses that had slipped off, with a curious look on his face. He's a man with great power. Ethan asked suspiciously. Is it enough to save us? Enough power to evaporate this cave. That's really scary, but it's a pity that he didn't find you, and he doesn't have a heart to heart, with you. Ethan was taken aback, teasing Tony with a regretful tone. After I go out, I must use the battle suit I made to have a good, communication, with him. Tony touched the reactor on his chest, remembering the bruised eye sockets that were smashed by Leo Dwang and Dwang several times before, and grinned. That will have to wait until we finish making your battle suit and try to escape with our own strength. Ethan slapped Tony back to reality. Yeah, I can only rely on myself. Looking at the scattered parts on the table that only he could see to be an iron arm, Tony stood up, picked up the welding tool on the ground, walked to the workbench, and murmured, Time is running out, those people's patience is about to run out, we need to speed up the progress. Ah, in the desert, a figure in casual clothes looked at the town in front of him, rubbed his nose, and said affirmatively, Someone must be speaking ill of me behind my back. And I guess it's Tony. He dares to speak ill of the master, I will scratch his face. Xing Ye who stayed on Leo's sword suddenly showed his sharp claws. Because Xing Ye doesn't have a vocal organ, it can only use the mind connection between it and Leo, but this is good, after all, a cat that speaks people's words is really eye-catching. Rubbing Xing Ye's head, Leo smiled and said, the town ahead is the town of Gamilla that the terrorists mentioned. I hope to get some news. For a week, Leo has been looking for Tony for a week, because it was Tony who was hijacked by terrorists, so Leo adopted a relatively stupid method, directly seeking information from the terrorists. During this week, Leo used teleportation to kick many terrorists' lairs, but he didn't get any news from Tony, and the town in front of him was the last terrorist who was kicked out of his lair by Leo. Leo intends to go there to investigate some news. Gmila, a small town ruled by fear, the people here are precarious, and there is a scene of ruins, but in this ruined town, there is a strange existence, that is a small town called, the past. The bar, in this ruined town, is very eye-catching because of its unusual cleanliness and tidiness. No terrorist dares to do anything there, because those who do it will lose their lives, and everyone cherishes their lives very much. I heard that the owner of that small bar used to be a killer, a very famous killer, a killer who would work for you as long as he was paid, a Chinese killer, people don't know what his name is, just from the mouths of those terrorists the strange pronunciation could barely make out the person, surnamed Gao. Fun Bar After Leo inquired about this bar from a terrorist in an unfriendly way, he couldn't help feeling a little curious, and then he greeted the terrorist and lay down on the terrorist, using his little black claws to give the terrorist, facelift, starry night. Hearing Leo's shout, Xing Ye, swished, onto Leo's shoulders, retracted her little paw, looked at the bloodstained face of the terrorist, and flicked her tail in satisfaction. I hope I won't be frightened by my own face when I wake up. Looking at the fainted terrorist, Leo smiled lightly, and then, accidentally, stepped on the terrorist's foot lightly. After a click on the leg, 
accompanied by the scream of the terrorist, Leah walked into the bar of, old days. The, old days, bar is a bit shabby, but compared to those buildings in Gamilla whose walls are ventilated, this bar can be called luxurious. Leo sat in this strange bar, observing every drunken customer in the bar, with fierce expressions on his face, sour smell all over his body, and all kinds of weapons on his body, all of which showed their identities invisibly terrorist. Leo shook his head and looked at his target, Boss Gao who was still calm among the terrorists. Reaching out and tapping on the table, Leo said, have a glass of whiskey. Are you of mixed race? In this chaotic place, Boss Gao was a little surprised when he suddenly heard this Chinese in a proper accent. No, I'm from Wabwo. Even though he has the appearance of a half-breed, Leo's soul is a real Wabwo. Hearing Leo's words, Boss Gao narrowed his eyes slightly, looked at Leo, who was neatly dressed and sitting very conspicuously among a group of stinking terrorists, and smiled, the only beer here is for those fools. Then I'm glad I'm not a fool. You're an interesting person. Boss Gao was stunned for a moment, with an interesting expression on his bearded face, he took out a wine glass from under the bar and poured Leo a glass of whiskey. After taking a sip, Leo suddenly said, I heard that Boss Gao is well informed. Hearing Leo's words, Boss Gao wiped the bar table with his hand, paused for a moment, raised his eyelids slightly, looked at Leo who was sipping his wine, and continued to wipe the table without saying a word. With a slight smile, Leo continued to speak, I need to know something. The tone was not a question, but an affirmation, as if Leo was very sure that Boss Gao knew about him. Hearing this, Boss Gao finally raised his head, his black eyes glowed coldly, and he pursed his lips, are you a Mandarin? Master Mandarin, hearing this strange name, Leo was taken aback for a moment, then shook his head with a smile, no. Then we can talk about it. Reducing the cold look in his eyes, Boss Gao threw down the rag in his hand and shouted loudly at the drunks sitting in the bar, get out, I'm closing today. Drink money throw it on the table for me. Hearing Boss Gao's words, all the drunk customers froze for a moment. Although they were a little dissatisfied, they didn't dare to say much because of the boss's clean and quick killing methods. After drinking the beer on the wine table in one breath, they honestly put down the wine money, with a sound of closing the door, left cleanly. I poured myself a glass of wine, took a sip, wiped the liquid from the corner of my mouth, and asked, what news do you want? So refreshing, now it was Leo's turn to be stunned. Originally, he thought that Boss Gao, who used to be a killer, would make some excuses. Boss Gao looked at this man who was just like the man he had seen, who was faintly revealing a trace of toughness, hugged his arm, and said, for you who have great power, you always have a way to get it. Isn't it the news I want? If this is the case, why should I ask for trouble? What a wise choice. Putting down his glass, Leo praised, and said, I want to know, news about Tony and Stark. Tony, Stark, the weapons made by that man are very popular here, and I also like to use the weapons made by their Stark. Hearing Leo's words, Boss Gao finally let go of his vigilance and praised him first. After the sound, a sneer appeared on the corner of his mouth, it's because he is so popular that he was kidnapped. Speaking of this, Boss Gao paused, and continued, the people who bought his weapons don't want to spend any more money. After all, it's better to make it yourself than to spend money. Know who did it. If those drunk people here aren't talking nonsense after drinking, they're talking about the Ten Rings gang. When talking about the Ten Rings gang, Boss Gao's eyes flashed coldly. Ten Rings gang. Leo was startled, remembering the name that the invisible mutant said when the Jericho missile was stolen last time. Do you know where they kidnapped Tony's lair? I don't know. Boss Gao smiled, and after seeing Leo's frown, he added leisurely, however, I know where many of their gathering points are. If necessary, you can visit them one by one. Go find it. That's the only way to go. Leo nodded, looked at Boss Gao who kept silent, knowing that Boss Gao was asking for the price, and immediately said, tell me about the price. Hearing this, Boss Gao had a satisfied smile on his bearded face, and said, the price is to take me with you. Anything. Seeing the murderous look in Boss Gao's eyes, Leo raised his eyebrows. From under the bar, he took out a handful of dark weapons. After placing them on his body in an orderly manner, Boss Gao said in a deep voice, no, atonement. Yes, in Boss Gao's view, this is just atonement. 
When he received a request from the Ten Rings gang a year ago to kill the bar owner who has the ability to heal mutants and has been using mutant abilities to heal the town's residents, he knew that such a day would come, but he also knew how weak he was in the face of the Ten Rings gang, and meeting Leo this time was undoubtedly an excellent opportunity, so he would not let it go chance of redemption. He will always remember that night, when that pure and kind girl died, the pure eyes that looked at him, and the girl's gentle words, I should die to help you. If so, it's okay if I die, but my bar is a pity. Can you take care of it for me? Looking at the girl's expectant eyes, his heart that had been icy cold from killing countless people at that time was shattered by this girl in an instant. In the end, he nodded when the girl closed his eyes, and agreed. And he kept his promise with the girl and became the gal boss of this, old days, bar, until today. After boss gal closed the door of the bar and hung a sign saying, temporarily closed, trespassing at your own risk, Leo's thoughts surged and enveloped boss gal, and then the two of them flew into the air and disappeared. The Ten Commandments Gang, an organization led by Mandarins, a terrorist organization that firmly believes that it can rule the world, and a terrorist gang that is completely composed of lunatics in the eyes of outsiders. The unscrupulous behavior style, coupled with strong arms support and the personal terror of the Mandarin, made the Ten Rings Gang a fierce and terrifying existence in the entire Middle East, but it is such a terrifying gang. For a few days, those strongholds were destroyed one after another. Boom. With a huge roar, another stronghold of the Ten Rings gang was blown up into the sky, and then a figure with lightning descended from the sky under the scorching sun. Looking at the dazzling fireworks, in the distance, Boss Gao took out the map he drew, drew a blood-red X on it, nodded in satisfaction, looked at Leo's lonely figure, and asked, find the map. Are you friends yet? Shaking his empty hand, Leo grinned, asked the question knowingly. Where is the next place? Hearing what Leo said, Boss Gao pointed at the map and said, maybe your friend will be there. I hope so. Leo nodded and disappeared with Boss Gao. In the dark cave, there were rhythmic steel beating sounds, mixed with Tony's beating heart, exuding a strange rhythm. Looking at the steel mask that was slowly forming under the hammer, Tony's brown eyes that reflected the firelight exuded astonishing heat. Ding. Following a metallic clang, Tony clamped the red mask with tongs and put it in the cooling fluid. A burst of water vapor rose. When the red color on the mask that represented high temperature faded away, Tony clamped the red mask and put it into the coolant. Wen's mask was placed on the workbench with a bang. Finished. Ethan, who was sitting by the workbench, looked at the metal mask, his thin face slowly filled with joy. Well, it's time to start. Ethan, nodding, Tony slightly restrained the fiery temperature in his eyes, smiled at the inmate, who was facing him day and night, and said, we will be free soon. Already. Tony wrapped a white gauze tape on his hands to prevent abrasions, and with Ethan's help, he put on a leather inner armor that reduces cushioning. Tony stood behind a shelter made of old sheets, blocking the view of the surveillance finally, with the help of simple manual machinery, under Ethan's control, he began to put on his carefully crafted steel battle suit. One piece, two pieces. As time passed, more and more parts of Tony's body were covered with steel, and Tony's impatient heart became calmer and calmer. He, who never believed in God, couldn't help praying silently in his heart at this moment, pray that I can activate my battle suit safely. But things often backfired. Just after praying, he heard the sound of knocking on the door. Obviously, the terrorists discovered the abnormality here. Ethan, Stark, Tony who could barely understand his own name, was a little helpless listening to the bird-like foreign language outside. To Ethan, who was sweating and his hands were trembling, he comforted him, relax Ethan, what are they talking about? Stabilize their emotions first. I don't know. They speak Hungarian. I don't know Hungarian. Ethan showed a helpless expression while nervously carrying out the work at hand. Then say something. It's better than not answering anything. Okay. Ethan replied and after throwing out a few words in a language that Tony couldn't understand, the roar outside became louder. Bang bang, hearing that the people outside had started to pull the door forcefully, Tony cursed secretly, and then, the simple bomb that he hung behind the door in advance to prevent accidents made a violent explosion sound, ending his life mission. The effect is really good. Watching the terrorists outside being blown away, Ethan prays. Of course, that's what I do. Tony is always so confident about his work. What should I do next? 
After the bomb exploded, the nervous Ethan calmed down, and calmly asked Tony about the next job. Tony glanced at the laptop on the table and said, start the power system now. How to do it? Press F11 and let me know when you see the progress bar. Good. Appeared. Now press Ctrl and I, then. Following Tony's command, Ethan completed his work, and then the progress bar rose up little by little. Not enough time. Watching the progress bar, move, a little bit, and hearing the roars coming in from outside, Ethan murmured to himself, looked at Tony, and said with a firm face, I'll go by some time, immediately, without waiting for Tony to object, he rushed to the door, picked up the gun that fell to the ground from the terrorist who had just been blown up, and roared as if to cheer himself up, pulled the trigger and charged. Out. Timing is everything, and now Tony deeply understands the meaning of this sentence. Hurry up, hurry up. Looking at the progress bar, Tony, who was worried about Ethan's safety, shouted anxiously in his heart. Buzz. Finally, when the progress bar reached 100%, the whole cave suddenly went dark. Afterwards, a faint blue light emanated from the reactor on Tony's chest, filling the whole cave. He tried to move and felt the battle suit. After the powerful force, Tony behind the steel mask showed a satisfied smile, and then rushed out of the cave with slow but powerful steps, rushing towards the shouting Ten Rings gang terrorists. Jingle clang clang. The bullets hit Tony's steel suit, like a pleasant percussion instrument, making a crisp impact sound, and sparks flickered in vain in the dim hole. Devil. With the help of flickering fireworks, the terrorists who shot in the dark saw the silver outline of the steel suit, and then the fear of the unknown appeared in their eyes, and they yelled in horror, and began to slowly attack. Withdrew out of the cave. Hey. Looking at the retreating terrorists, Tony sneered, and the Iron Man, full of powerful oppression, chased them away step by step. He slightly raised his arm, knocked away the terrorists in front of him, and kicked away the gunmen who were lying on the ground and shot at him. Those terrorists had no power to fight back in front of Tony, who was wearing a steel suit. In this way, under the protection of the steel armor, Tony rushed to the entrance of the cave with an unstoppable momentum, and saw Ethan lying on the ground with a pale face. Be careful, looking at the Iron Man rushing out, Ethan tried his best to remind Tony loudly. Tony subconsciously turned his body sideways to avoid the incoming missiles, rubbed his arms, ignited the small missiles he made, and after blowing up the enemies at the entrance of the cave, he rushed to Ethan with a stride, opened his steel mask, and looked at with a weak smile and the bullet wound on his chest, Ethan suppressed his sadness and shouted, Ethan. Boom. The explosion sound from a distance caught Leo's attention, and he looked at Boss Gao standing beside him with a questioning look. Boss Gao's black eyes flickered coldly, he nodded and said, that's right, that's our next target. I hope it's Tony, Leo whispered, leading Boss Gao to disappear. At this time, in the cave, Tony looked at the sunlight coming in from the entrance of the cave, and suddenly felt that the sunlight was so dazzling at this moment, he felt that his eyes seemed to be stimulated by the sunlight and they were faintly moist. This was a place that could only be reached by walking a few steps in the past, but it was like a ridge that couldn't be crossed for Ethan, whose life was passing by rapidly. Dude, come on, we agreed to escape together as planned. This is my plan. Death is not something to fear for me. Ethan looked indifferent, he had seen through life and death, and at this moment in front of death, he seemed so extraordinary. Your wife and child are still waiting for you. Tony roared loudly, trying to use this method to stimulate Ethan's will to survive. They have already died in the chaos of war, I seem to see them waving to me. Ethan had a happy smile on his face. Hearing this, Tony was a little dumbfounded, he didn't know such a situation. He didn't say this to make Ethan die with such a clear face. Stark, let's go. Ethan, ahem, although it's a bit embarrassing to interrupt your life and death parting, but if I don't make a sound, he will really die. Just when Tony was desperate, a voice full of ridicule came from his side. Hearing this familiar voice, Tony shook his body, the sadness on his face disappeared instantly, and shouted with excitement, you fool, are you standing and watching my joke? Ha ha. Walking to Tony's side, Leo's hand glowed with a warm golden light, and he put it gently beside Ethan, smiled at Ethan and said, sorry, buddy, you can't die. That's really a pity. Feeling the warmth of the wound, Ethan tugged the corner of his mouth weakly. After a dozen or so breaths, Ethan's wound had recovered to its original state. 
At this time, the members of the Ten Rings gang who had retreated outside heard nothing happening inside, looked at each other with terrified expressions, and held the guns in their hands, cautiously groped towards the entrance of the cave, intending to check the situation inside. Hearing the footsteps outside, Ethan stood up with Tony's support, weakly reminding, they're coming. Come here, Tony, who knew Leo's strength, curled his lips indifferently, but noticed the black kitten lying on Leo's shoulder. Ah, Leo, when did you become so loving? You raised such a cute kitten. Tony looked at Starry Knight lazily lying on Leo's shoulders, and stretched out his steel arms, as if wanting to touch the Starry Knight. You stink. Frowning, Leo avoided Tony's side with a disgusted expression on his face. Ha, Tony was stunned, and after sucking his nose twice, he smiled with embarrassment, that, ha ha, I haven't showered for a long time, it's, justifiable. At this moment, the members of the Ten Rings gang who walked to the entrance of the cave saw Leo who appeared mysteriously. Although they were a little confused about how this person appeared, after seeing the Iron Man standing beside Leo, their doubts immediately disappeared. They threw it behind their heads, and pulled the trigger on the Iron Man who brought them great fear. Da da da, ah, hearing the gunshot, Ethan subconsciously hugged his head, but after a while, he didn't feel the bullet hit his body, and then raised his head in doubt. This is, looking at the bullet frozen in the air by Leo's thoughts, Ethan's face was shocked, and he remembered what Tony said in the cave, enough power to evaporate this place. The Black Emperor, he is the Black Emperor in your mouth. Ah, Tony responded vaguely, pulling down the mask. Looking at the members of the Ten Rings gang at the entrance of the cave, Leo looked calm and showed no mercy to these terrorists. The bullets blocked by his thoughts, under his control, swept towards their original owners like a storm. There was a scream of fear. In the next second, he returned to calm. Looking at the corpses of the members of the Ten Rings gang that occupied the entrance of the cave, Ethan's thin and pale face was full of pleasure, thinking of his hometown that was shrouded in terror, he said in a hateful voice, there is no reason for death. Let's go. Using his thoughts to sweep away the corpses blocking the entrance of the cave, Leo led the way out of the cave. Because I haven't seen the sun for a long time, Ethan couldn't help but close his eyes when he stepped out of the cave, but Tony yelled, Leo, help me look at Ethan, I'll go and solve the remaining problems, these enemies. Supporting Ethan with his thoughts, Leo stood on the spot, looking like he was venting. He controlled his steel armor and burned the enemy with flames. Sighing, seeing that Tony was not in danger, Leo became a little curious about Tony's steel armor with welded joints everywhere. After a while, all the terrorists from the Ten Rings gang were swept away by Tony. Tony waved at Leo and shouted loudly like showing off, How about it, my mark is not worse than your starry night. Hearing Tony comparing the ugly thing to himself, Xingye, who was lying on Leo's shoulder, stuck out his little black tongue and licked his paws, his silver eyes full of magic symbols were full of the color of disdain. Ignoring Tony's arrogant tail, Leo quietly looked into the distance, and he felt that there was a person exuding a terrifying aura, coming at an astonishing speed. Within a breath, the blurred silhouette of that person appeared in Leo's field of vision, and in the next instant, that person seemed to teleport, appearing directly not far behind Tony. Leo squinted his eyes, his eyes were a little dignified, and his thoughts surged. He pulled Tony, who had no idea that there was an extra person behind him, directly to his side, and then sized up this uninvited guest full of malice. She was dressed in a black suit, her long black hair was scrupulously combed down to her back, a neat goatee beard was on a slightly wrinkled face, and a pair of cold eyes were filled with the feeling that I am at the center of the world, I am the domineering aura of the world's ruler. Feeling the domineering aura, Leo twitched the corners of his mouth, and complained in his heart, a breath of the middle school. Pulled down by Leo with his thoughts, Tony, who finally saw the uninvited guest, shook his iron and steel battle suit in shock, and after a series of tinkling sounds, he called out, Who are you? The Mandarin squeezed the beard under his chin, put his hands behind his back, looked at Tony, and nodded as if seeing something he was satisfied with, Tony, Stark. You can call me the Mandarin. Ha, huh, quite a big man. You are quite big, very old. Opening the mask, looking at the Mandarin, wearing a steel suit, and with Leo by his side, Tony challenged this strange Mandarin confidently, grown-ups. Master Mandarin, the master of the Ten Rings gang. 
Hearing this man's words, Leo thought of the Mandarin that Boss Gao had mentioned. Leo looked at the Mandarin solemnly, no, to be precise, he looked at the rings on the hands of the Mandarin that were shining with various colors and colors, and these rings gave Leo a feeling of sharpness. If anyone wears rings on their hands, it will definitely give people the feeling of a vulgar nouveau riche, but on adults, it seems to be a matter of course. It seems that only these ten rings that are shining with splendor can set off Mandarin nobility. Noticing where Leo was looking, the Mandarin's long and narrow eyes flashed with a dangerous light. He glanced at Leo, grinned, and without saying a word, raised his left hand lightly. The dazzling electric current shot towards Leo with a roar that pierced the air. Electricity. Leo was taken aback, his palms slightly opened in front of his chest, and the electric current that came was like a good boy who found his own home, and quietly fell on Leo's hands. Give it back to you. Compress the electric current into a ball and hit the mandarin. Whoosh. The electric ball passed directly through the mandarin, hit the ground, and made an explosion sound, leaving a scorched black hole in vain. As this an afterimage, Leo's pupils shrank slightly as he saw the figure of the Mandarin who had been hit by the electric ball and dissipated with the wind. It's no loss that the person who destroyed many of my strongholds is qualified to be my subordinate. Nodding to Leo with satisfaction, he said in a tone that I am optimistic about you. Hearing this, the corner of Leo's mouth twitched, but Tony couldn't help laughing out loud, being your subordinate, why, you're not out of your mind because I am the future king of the world. The Mandarin stretched out his arms in a gesture of embracing the world. Seeing the Mandarin in this state, Tony also fell silent, looked at Leo, saw Leo had the same speechless expression as himself, and sighed helplessly. Regarding the silence of Tony and Tony, the Mandarin thought they were shocked by him, and then said, Mr. Stark, you are very like me. You have talents and rewards. Why can't you cooperate? Tony felt that it was time to break the illusion of this person, and immediately said, You are the king of the world and asked me to work for you, this is like AP. What a pity, I wanted to have a friendly cooperation with you. Sighing, the Mandarin looked at Leo, What about you, young man? To this, Leo's answer was only two words, sick. In this case, let's see my strength. Sen Lang's eyes swept over the three of Leo, and he tapped the ground with his toes. After leaving an afterimage on the spot, he appeared within 10 meters of Leo the place. Leo didn't move, but Xingye, who had been lying on his shoulders, narrowed his silver eyes, whoosh, and rushed to the ground, and then kicked his limbs on the ground, leaving four deep potholes on the spot, and bumped into the Mandarin's fist. Boom, a punch and a cat collided, and an invisible shock wave generated by a powerful force came from the intersection. Where the shock wave passed, sand splashed up, like a sand rain. Lightly turned over and landed on the ground, taking off the impact, Xingye lay on the ground, facing the shocked Mandarin, bared her teeth, and swayed her black tail casually behind her. This is a cat, Tony stretched out his hand to block the oncoming sand, looking at Xingye's small body, Tony almost bit off his tongue in shock. Stark, did I see death's pet? Ethan unconsciously lifted up the glasses that had slid down to the tip of his nose, and Ethan's worldview completely collapsed at this moment. Regarding this, Leo had a calm expression on his face. You must know that every cell that makes up Xingye is engraved with power magic runes. If Xingye's own energy storage is not enough to activate all the runes, Xingye's power is not enough. A bit bigger. Xingye. Leo yelled when he saw the Mandarin subconsciously rubbing the rings on his hands. After Xingye lay on his shoulder again, he said to Xingye with his thoughts, you protect the two of them and go to Boss Gao. There, this person is dangerous. Okay, master. Hearing Leo's words, Starry Knight showed his paws at the Mandarin in a demonstration, jumped to Tony's feet, and stretched out his little paws to Tony. Hey, what are you doing? Take your dangerous little paws away. Seeing this, Tony jumped back with a bang. Tony, take care of Ethan. Xingye will take you to a friend's place. After explaining, Leo stared closely at the increasingly imposing Mandarin, gave up the idea of teleporting away directly, and curled his mouth, there was a spark of fighting spirit in his eyes. Hearing Leo's words, Tony pursed his lips, a trace of worry flashed in his eyes, and then reached out to stop Ethan, who had lost a lot of blood, behind his steel arms, and asked Xingye, who was squatting on the ground, mockingly, little cat. How are you going to take us away? 
showing a humane sneer. Xing Ye stood up on two hind legs like a human being, walked to Tony's side amidst Tony's twitching face, and with a sudden jump, two front paws caught Tony's iron. Ah, on the buttocks, there was a squeak, and the sharp claws clasped the steel tightly and directly lifted Tony. Shame, I, Stark, was lifted up by a cat. Tony muttered softly, and then felt a gust of wind rushing towards him, but Xing Ye had already started to run on his own legs. A salon appeared behind the speeding Starry Knight. Ignoring Tony who was taken away by Starry Knight, the Mandarin looked at Leo whose body was shining with lightning, a sharp cold light shot out from his long and narrow eyes, a white light visible to the naked eye appeared on his body, a gust of wind rolled up, and his hands were clawed, with a scream that pierced the air, hit Leo's heart. Hey, seeing this, Leo smiled lightly, Zanpakuto Kangali appeared in his hand, greatly strengthened by the current, and the speed suddenly exploded, and the Zanpakuto in his hand drew a stunning arc, and greeted the Mandarin. The Mandarin raised his head slightly, dodging the Zanpakuto that was slashing towards his neck, and slid to Leo's chest on one side like a swimming fish, while running towards Leo's heart with a dazzling white on in his right paw, with a trail of afterimages in his left hand, he grabbed the handle of the Zanpakuto. Seeing this, Leo let go of the Zanpakuto with his left hand, shook hands into a fist, and a dazzling silver light flashed, facing the Mandarin's right claw that stabbed at his chest, while the right hand holding the Zanpakuto controlled the Zanpakuto he turned around in his hand and slashed towards the Mandarin's left hand. Boom, the fists and claws collided, electric current and white light shot out, and then Leo's face changed. He felt as if his left hand had hit a piece of steel. At the same time, his hand made a sound during this collision. Clear sound, this is the sound of bone cracking. Hey, with a cold shout, the electric current in his hand suddenly exploded, and the strong electric current paralyzed the Mandarin for a while, and then the force of thought gushed out, directly sending the Mandarin in front of him flying, enduring the pain in his hand, a bolt of lightning formed his javelin appeared in his left hand, and he shot it at the Mandarin in the air. Seeing this, the Mandarin did not panic at all. The ring on the little finger of his left hand flashed slightly, and a spiral of cold air appeared. When the lightning javelin was about to approach, a thick ice wall appeared. After blocking the javelin, the Mandarin lightly fell to the ground. Smiling coldly, the Mandarin patted the ice debris splashed by the explosion on his body, looked at Leo who was standing there, and said, you are already injured. Young man. So what? Leo smiled indifferently, a warm golden light appeared on his injured hand, and the next second, after a burst of itching and numbness, his left hand had recovered. Seeing Leo shake hands, the man who knew that Leo was completely injured had a look of surprise on his face, and a sneer hung on the corner of his mouth, since I can hurt you, I can kill you. As soon as the words fell, rushed towards Leo again. While Leo was fighting the Mandarin, Xingye had already brought Tony to Ba Gao's side. With a sound of palm nut, Xingye threw Tony on the sand under Tony's resentful eyes. Can't you be gentle, kitten, you're so savage, no cat will like you. Looking at Xingye who had regained his knees and walked on all fours, Tony joked, but the scene that appeared in the next moment almost made his heart ache. Eyeballs fall out. The tail behind Xingye stood up, and a palm-sized black metal frame like a small blackboard grew out of the tail, and then the metal in the metal frame moved, and hollow-out characters appeared. Are you a fool? I have no gender. Tony finished reading every word, and looked at Starry Knight, who was grinning like a cat and showing a mocking expression, his face was as ugly as eating a fly, he stark there will be a day when you will be despised by cats. Just when Tony wanted to teach Starry Knight a good lesson, Boss Gao with a black gun barrel said, you are Mr. Leo's friend. Looking at the man who was assembling the gun, Tony asked, who are you? My surname is Gao, you can call me Boss Gao. He raised the sniper rifle in his hand, glanced into the distance, and said indifferently. Nobody can make me call him the boss. Hearing Tony's words, Boss Gao paused, put down the gun in his hand, narrowed his eyes, and said with a smile, you're an interesting person too. While the two were talking, Ethan, who was so weak that he could only lie on the sand, said, that kitten is gone. The starry night is gone. Hearing Ethan's words, Boss Gao asked, and then saw a few jeeps approaching here from the scope of the sniper rifle, and saw the Ten Rings gang logo on the jeep body. Finally, he pulled the trigger without hesitation. The next moment, a bullet with powerful kinetic energy was shot directly into the fuel tank of a jeep, 
turning the jeep into a ball of flames, and said to Tony, trouble is coming. Seeing the jeep behind him turning into a ball of flames, Yuan Wen who was driving trembled, and said to Li Yuan by sitting next to him, brother, hurry up, I'm going to speed up. It's you, I don't want to turn into scum without firing a single shot. Li Yuanbai stared at his bull's eye and roared in a rough voice. Boom, a car was shot again, and the remaining three jeeps had already arrived not far from Tony and the others. Then, members of the Ten Rings gang jumped out of the car in order to prevent being shot again, and faced Tony's direction. He returned fire. Dragging Ethan behind Tony, and hiding himself behind the steel giant, Boss Gao silently counted the enemy's steps based on his long-term accumulated experience. Ding ding dong. Dude, I'm not a bunker. Hearing the sound of bullets hitting his back, Tony complained, and then said, give me a gun, my suit is out of ammunition. Ignoring Tony, after Boss Gao counted to 31, he dropped the sniper rifle in his hand. A cold light flashed in his black eyes. Under Tony's surprised gaze, he rushed over and rolled twice on the ground. Two black large caliber guns the pistol slipped out of his sleeve. Bang bang. The gunshot rang out, and accompanied by the screams of the enemy, Boss Gao rushed towards the enemy like an elegant black panther with black, fangs, in his hand. After a moment, when the gunfire stopped, Tony turned his head slightly to look at the enemy. I saw that, except for Boss Gao and two members of the Wabwo Ten Rings gang who were still standing, there were corpses all over the place. Boss Gao, I'm Yuan Wen. The big-eyed Yuan Wen looked at Boss Gao with excitement. I know, that's why I didn't kill you. Great, we found Boss Gao. Li Yuanbai roared at the top of his voice, blinked his eyes twice, and complained. After you left, Xiao Wen and I had to join the Ten Rings gang in order to avoid the enemy. We have suffered a lot, we believe that we will find you, and you will lead us to fame, drink. Quote dot. Seeing that the remaining two members of the Ten Rings gang seemed to know Boss Gao, Tony raised his eyebrows, relieved, and looked at the place where the roaring sound was still coming out with worried eyes. Leo, who was dressed in a black battle suit and had already put on the starry knight armor, had greatly increased his defensive power. He once again punched the mandarin, and at the same time he retreated, the Zanpakuto in his hand slashed out a flash of lightning. Sen smiled coldly, the red ring on the index finger of the mandarin's left hand flashed slightly, a group of flames with explosive energy blocked in front of the lightning blade light, the two collided, and there was another violent explosion sound. Looking at the Mandarin in the distance, Leo was very surprised. You must know that he is wearing a starry night. Even so, under the blessing of that white on, the Mandarin cannot lose his physical strength. This feeling is like, looking at the white glow on the Mandarin, Leo thought for a moment, and his eyes lit up, it's like a martial arts master who has practiced peerless martial arts in martial arts novels. At this time, the Mandarin looked at Leo who was obviously distracted, but sneered, the ring on the ring finger of his right hand began to flicker, and then a bright ray shot towards Leo, and the Mandarin whispered, cutting beam. Chapter 71 Dangerous, extremely dangerous, as soon as the ray appeared, Leo's head felt a dull pain as if being stabbed by a needle, and then, he directly used the teleportation that he had not used before in the battle with the Mandarin to avoid the danger simultaneously with the ray, it teleported directly behind the Mandarin and slashed at the Mandarin who opened the empty door. At this moment, a powerful spiritual energy rushed into Leo's mind, causing Leo to stop swinging the knife involuntarily. Mind Control The blue gemstone on the Mandarin's left ring finger shone with blue brilliance, reflecting the smile on the Mandarin's mouth, looking a little eerie. Leo is no stranger to psychic energy. Whether it is Emma who has just entered the fourth level or Professor X, they are both strong masters of psychic energy, and Leo also has low-level telepathy, so in the first place controlled by the Mandarin for a moment, Leo's powerful spiritual energy due to his thoughts exploded directly. After breaking through the Mandarin's mind control, the sword in his hand continued to slash at the Mandarin. Although the control time is extremely short, it is enough for Mandarin to react from the surprise attack brought by teleportation. Turning around quickly, facing the attacking Zanpakuto, Master Man raised a white light with both hands, and after making a sound of gold and iron clashing, he directly clamped Zanpakuto between his palms. Seeing this, Leo's eyes froze, and when he was about to draw the sword, 
The ring on the little finger of the Mandarin's left hand began to shimmer, and the next moment, a blue ice line spread along the Zanpakuto at an extremely fast speed. This is a temperature where even the air would be frozen. In the face of such an attack, Leo did not hesitate at all. With a thought, Zanpakuto disappeared, and then teleported away. His hand with electric light snapped his fingers, followed by a flash of lightning it fell from the sky and fell to Mandarin. Facing the instant lightning, Mandarin raised his left middle finger facing the thunder and lightning in the sky, and then a bolt of lightning appeared from the ring, facing the falling lightning, and the two collided together, which was extremely dazzling. You can use lightning with your middle finger up. If you are hit by such lightning, wouldn't it be a double injury to your body and heart? I complained in my heart, and lightning flashed on my body, and lightning javelins appeared, quietly floating on Leo. In front of him, and then, under the strong throw of thought power, it seemed to turn into a continuous water line, and attack the Mandarin. Boom boom boom. The lightning javelin collided with the ice wall made by the Mandarin ring and the red flame full of explosive power, making a roar, and the ground began to tremble under the destructive energy. At this moment, Leo grunted sadly, with a look of shock on his face, but it was because the gravity under his feet suddenly increased nearly 50 times. The internal organs have been damaged. Faced with the sudden increase in gravity, Leo was already injured. This was because Xingye itself resisted gravity. If it weren't for this, Leo would be directly crushed by this gravity compared to the current situation where he was only slightly injured. Using teleportation, leaving the spot, looking at the Mandarin in the distance, Leo took a deep breath, the injury on his body has recovered under the healing effect of Xingye. Gravity, flame, frost, lightning, mind control, beams full of Haokai breath, these abilities are really comprehensive. If a ring represents one ability, he still has four abilities that he has not used yet. Looking at the Mandarin on the ten fingers, with the rings shining with various lights, Leo had a headache for the Mandarin's endless abilities. As a descendant of Genghis Khan, as a descendant of the king, now I will give you another chance to submit to me. Looking at Leo standing in the distance, the Mandarin's long and narrow eyes were full of indifference. I'm sick. A faint reply, Zanpakuto appeared in Leo's hand again. Teleportation, teleportation, continuous teleportation, Leo uses teleportation to launch continuous attacks on the Mandarin, but as soon as Leo disappears, the Mandarin's powerful fighting consciousness will anticipate Leo's next appearance place, and then a small area where Leo appears will be shrouded in gravity, thereby diffusing Leo's attack. Although as long as Leo teleports away directly, the battle will end, but it's not Leo's style to just walk away in such a desperate manner. The figure flashed, escaped from the envelope of gravity again, looked at the Mandarin, Leo's eyes flashed, holding his own Zanpakuto in both hands, and pointed at the Mandarin. Looking at the Zanpakuto in his hand, Leo hooked the corner of his mouth, slightly excited, and said softly, Judgment. Kang Lei. As Leo uttered Kang Lei's liberation words, a blue thunderbolt burst out from the blade, enveloping Leo directly, and made a piercing roar. The next moment, the blue thunderbolt fell into Leo's hands like water. Kang Lei absorbed it, and then, the Kang Lei in Leo's hand had changed. The handle, which was originally black, has now turned into silver. The original silver blade, as if stained by darkness, has become extremely black. A blue lightning mark extends from the blood groove of the handle to the tip of the blade, flickering there are traces of pale blue electric light, full of sharpness. When the Kang Lei was released, a powerful force came from the blade, and traces of blue lightning surrounded Leo, giving Leo a speed three times faster than before. The blue-colored electric light, with a powerful penetrating image, is constantly surging like a stream of water. With a slight smile, he gently waved the Zanpakutao in his hand at the Mandarin, and cut out a blue-colored sword glow. He flashed his body, instead of teleporting, but followed the sword glow at an extremely fast and incomparable speed now. After that, he rushed to the Mandarin. The tip of the Kang Lei scratched across the sand under his feet and melted instantly, leaving a scarlet red mark. Looking at the ice wall blocking the Mandarin, Leo waved the Kang Lei in his hand again and again. With the intention of penetrating, the blue-colored sword pierced through the thick ice wall and continued to slash towards the Mandarin. Seeing this, Manchu narrowed his eyes, and the white light on his body exploded fiercely. With the speed given to him by the instant explosion of power, at the very moment, he dodged the knife light, facing Leo who was rushing, 
and the middle finger of his right hand slightly as soon as he moved, a rapidly rotating whirlwind formed around him, rolling up a large amount of sand, turning into a sandstorm and with a huge tearing force, it rolled towards the direction Leo rushed. It's far worse than Magneto's metal storm. With a whisper, Leo's footsteps did not stop at all. A blue lightning shot out from Kang Lei's knife, wrapping Leo, and then under the protection of the blue lightning, Leo left a blue electric trace, rushed into the whirlwind full of sand. The entire hurricane is full of sand. Under the action of the hurricane, the fine sand hits the body of an ordinary person, which is enough to make the person's head bleed, but for Leo, it only plays a role in blocking the line of sight. The next moment, as if a passage had been opened in the body of the hurricane, Leo rushed out with violent blue lightning and continued to slash at the mandarin. Seeing the strand of long black hair that had just been chopped off by the blue blade light falling down with the wind, boundless anger rose in the cold eyes of the mandarin, and then the rings on the middle finger of the right hand, the little finger of the left hand, the middle finger and the index finger shone dazzlingly, the next moment, a three-color energy whirlwind composed of red flames, blue ice, and silver lightning appeared. The red flames containing explosions and scorching heat and the irritable silver lightning were separated by the blue icy energy, reaching a strange balance, and then driven by the whirlwind, they turned rapidly, and under the strong control of the mandarin, with destructive energy, he rolled towards the blue figure that had already broken through the sandstorm and rushed towards him. Danger. Looking at the colorful whirlwind full of destructive aura, Leo's eyes flickered, and he wanted to teleport, but the destructive aura of the energy whirlwind affected the space around him, limiting his teleportation, and just when he wanted to use his speed to dodge quickly, the stronger gravity than before directly suppressed his speed. Die. Looking at Leo in the distance, the Mandarin roared furiously, his long black hair fluttering wildly with the powerful energy, like roaring black poisonous snakes, making people terrified. Under the effect of gravity, it is impossible to avoid the destructive whirlwind. Seeing this, a blue light flashed in Leo's eyes, and then a large number of blue light burst out from Kang Lei's knife, and suddenly radius the space was completely enveloped by dancing blue lightning, and then Leo gently tapped the tip of the knife in his hand to the ground. Prison, Chin Lei. Following Leo's voice, all the dancing blue lightning rushed into the sand under Leo's feet, and in the next instant, those violent thunder and lightning rushed directly towards the, the three-color whirlwind that destroyed the energy, when it was about to collide with the whirlwind, it avoided it nimbly, and then surrounded the energy storm with a diameter of more than 10 meters, outlined a 100-meter diameter on the ground, filled with magic array with lightning runes. The huge magic array is shining with blue lightning, like a dormant monster with a dangerous aura. At the same time, looking at the energy whirlwind in the magic array, Leo grinned, the Zanpakuto that was lightly tapped on the ground was pressed down violently by him until it was submerged by a third, and the calm blue magic circle was instantly activated. One after another is as thin as a finger, densely packed like a jungle of thorns, with the intention of penetrating lightning soaring into the sky, covering the entire space of the magic array. The tail light stabbed at the whirlwind carrying the destructive aura, penetrating and entwining. The streaks of lightning with the intention of penetrating directly penetrated the energy whirlwind. In the blink of an eye, the entire whirlwind was stuck with blue lightning, and instantly the entire energy whirlwind was pierced to pieces. Quiet, like the calm before the storm, the whole scene seemed to have no breath, it calmed down instantly, but the next moment, the fragmented energy whirlwind suddenly exploded with destructive energy. Flame, ice, lightning, and the hurricane that swept all around instantly filled the entire magic array, and after being blocked by the magic array, the blue magic array exploded together. Boom! There was a roar that resounded through the sky, and Tony and his party, who were hiding in the safe zone, couldn't help covering their ears, feeling the constantly beating sand under their feet, and watching the flames, lightning, and ice in the distance. Occupying the sky, terrified. Is this the end? Looking at this horrifying scene, Ethan's face became even paler due to excessive blood loss. Hearing this, Tony and his party subconsciously nodded. There was a clear, Kai, and while the energy was erupting, Leo had already rushed to the Mandarin with the Kang Lei, and swung a fierce knife at the Mandarin. Even the Mandarin didn't expect that Leo would be so crazy that he would dare to rush forward in the face of the fierce burst of energy, so facing the slashed Kang Lei, he retreated in a little haste, he didn't want to use it. Try the sharpness of Kang Lei with your own body. Humph. With a muffled hum, the Mandarin was injured after all in the face of Leo's surprise attack. With a muffled, 
Hum, he walked away from Leo, looking at the clothes that had been scratched on his chest and the clothes that had begun to ooze. A white glow flashed across his chest, barely stopping the blood from the bloody wound. The man looked at Leo with a pale face, his long and narrow eyes were full of gloom, and when the corners of his eyes turned to the four rings that seemed a bit dim at the moment because he had used too much energy, he blew his beard unwillingly, the toes touch the ground, and leave quickly. Seeing the disappearing Mandarin, Leo took a deep breath, and did not choose to pursue, just like the Mandarin was afraid of the thunder in his hand, Leo also had a strong feeling for the ring that the Mandarin had not used yet. The Meaning of Vigilance Xingye on his body did his best to protect Leo when he burst into the energy of the explosion, but he still suffered some minor injuries. With the golden light spots constantly emitting from Xingye, Leo's aching chest was in the process of recovery. In just a few dozen seconds, when his thoughts released Xingye's battle armor form, Leo had completely recovered, recovered. Wiping off the blood remaining at the corner of his mouth, he waved Kang Lei, shook off the red drop of blood on the tip of the knife, retracted Kang Lei, and murmured, next time I will kill you. As soon as the words fell, Leo disappeared, leaving only a huge red crater constantly exuding high temperature, proving how fierce the battle was just now. Beside Tony and the others, Leo appeared. After seeing the corpses of many members of the Ten Rings gang, Leo asked aloud, are you all right? Gudong, looking at Leo who suddenly appeared, recalling the terrifying scene just now, Tony and his party subconsciously swallowed and shook their heads. Well, Leo, are you okay? Looking at Leo with a tired face, Tony asked. It's nothing. Leo paused, and then said, you contact the military to take you away. Knowing that Leo is not suitable to meet with the military no matter whether he is the Black Emperor or the EO group, Tony nodded, took the communicator thrown by Boss Gao, adjusted it, and contacted Luo. Germany. After a brief explanation, with the help of Leo, Tony took off the metal battle suit, let out a sigh of relief, and told Leo that there was no problem, Leo nodded and remained silent. Boss Gao and the two terrified members of the Ten Rings gang disappeared. In the small town of Gemila, in front of the former bar. Are you going to stay here? Hearing Boss Gao's answer, Leo was taken aback. He he, of course, I still need to guard this bar. He took down the temporary closure sign and opened the door. Boss Gao smiled and said, come for a drink. Okay. In response, Leo walked into the bar. In this chaotic place, it is really lucky news that this former bar was not broken into by the terrorists outside without its owner. It's not that they haven't tried, but they didn't dare. I buried tens of kilograms of TNT in the house in front of all of them. If they touched the mechanism in my absence, hee hee. Having said this, Boss Gao smiled meaningfully. Arranging for the two younger brothers to follow behind him, he poured two glasses of wine and handed one to Leo. Boss Gao sat down. Nice to meet you. Lifting the cup in his hand, Boss Gao smiled. Ding. After clinking glasses with Boss Gao, Leo took a sip of wine. Leo admired the stubble-faced man in front of him. The boss Gao of the bar is undoubtedly a person who values righteousness. For this kind of person, some people may not understand their thoughts, but they will definitely admire their behavior. I'm leaving. After drinking the wine in the glass, Leo put down the glass in his hand and stood up. Poured himself a glass of wine again, raised the glass in his hand to Leo, and said sincerely, come and sit down when you have time. Okay. Nodding his head, Leo disappeared. Because this time it was all about saving Tony's relationship, Leo didn't trigger any crisis rescue missions, so when Leo returned home and said hello to old Paul and the others, he returned to his room, exhausted all over his body, fell on his own bed, and fell into a deep sleep. As night fell, Leo woke up and felt the hand rubbing against his face. He didn't open his eyes. He knew it was Emma just by feeling. He smiled slightly, grabbed that naughty hand, and gently touched pull, pull Emma into his arms. It's good to see you. Leo said slowly, as if in a dream. You're tired. Emma's white fingers moved slowly along the contours of Leo's face, waves of calm spiritual energy soaked into Leo's mind, soothing Leo's tired spirit. Opening his eyes, looking at Emma in front of him, Leo's blue eyes were full of emotion. Standing up, Emma stroked the long golden hair by her ear, and said softly, let's go. I personally made your favorite Chinese dish. Okay, I'll change my clothes. Today's dinner, 
Leo ate unusually happily, not only because he hadn't eaten well for many days, but also because it was made by his closest people. Wiping off the oil stains at the corners of his mouth, and about to get up, the phone in Leo's pocket rang, and after whispering, Tony, to Emma, he connected the phone. Tony, are you safe? Now, I'm at the military base here, and I'll rush back tomorrow. Tony's voice was a little low, full of thoughts. Since when did you become so polite and report me safe when you know it's safe? Hearing Tony's tone of voice, Leo made a small joke, trying to calm Tony's mood. Come on, dude, you must have guessed I have something to tell you. Ha ha, tell me, what's the matter? Leo raised his eyebrows, and followed Tony's words, and asked. Hearing Leo's words, Tony on the other end of the phone paused for a few seconds, as if he had made up his mind, he let out a long breath, and said in a deep voice, I want to close Stark's weapons department. Hearing Tony's words, Leo froze for a moment, then chuckled twice, and replied, okay. Hearing this, Tony was stunned, and asked in surprise, why don't you ask? Why do you ask? There is always a reason for what you do. As a friend, I just need to support you. Thank you. A moving voice came from the other end of the phone, representing the current mood of its owner. It's really not easy to hear these two words from your mouth. What a pity, I forgot to record. Leo raised his eyebrows, and his tone was full of ridicule. Ha ha, even if you record it, I will let Jarvis eliminate it. With Leo's support, Tony's voice became a little more cheerful. After laughing, he returned to his usual confident tone. I'll be there at 10 o'clock tomorrow. Don't expect me to pick you up. After hanging up Tony's phone, Leo smiled at Emma who was sitting beside him with a trace of curiosity on his face, and said, Tony is going to close Stark's weapons department. Ha, huh. Emma was stunned for a moment, a thoughtful expression flashed across her face, and then she smiled, it seems that he has experienced a lot this time, which is why he made such a decision. Yeah, he has indeed experienced a lot. Thinking of Tony's embarrassed look when he saw him in the cave, Leo sighed with emotion. The next day, just after breakfast, Leo had Whedon get the car ready. Although he said that he would not pick up Tony, as a friend who has been with him for more than 10 years, Leo has already made preparations. When he went, he even asked Belle to prepare Tony's favorite cheeseburger and put it in the car, in the incubator. When Leo arrived at the airport, he happened to see Thor get off the plane accompanied by Rhodes, and after signaling Whedon to drive the car closer to the plane, Leo opened the car door and walked out. Looking at the little pepper in front of him, Tony said emotionally, My eyes are red, miss your missing boss. I'm so happy, I can save time and find a job. Little Pepper gently wiped away the tears from the corners of his eyes, showing a big smile. Then your vacation is over. Seeing this scene, Leo approached with a smile and said, Are you bullying Pepper again? Also, welcome home. Hello, Mr. Leo. He greeted Leo in a friendly manner, and Pepper stood quietly aside. Come on, friends, aren't you not coming? Rolling his eyes at Leo, Tony looked arrogant, then twitched his nose twice, his eyes lit up, and said to Leo, you still know me. Bring the hamburger. Leo reached out and took the paper bag containing the hamburger from Whitten beside him, handed it over, and said with a smile, you are such a dog nose. He hurriedly took out a hamburger, couldn't wait to stuff it into his mouth, and said vaguely, it's so delicious, I think it's been more than two months. Seeing Tony eating happily, Leo suddenly said, have you decided? Nodding heavily, Tony hooked the corners of his mouth and smiled affirmatively, it's decided. As Tony's assistant, Pepper is well aware of his terrible personality for his boss, so after seeing him and Leo playing charades, the first feeling in his heart is that it is not good, very bad, so it is a bit overstepped acknowledging his responsibilities, he asked, although I don't know what you are talking about, I don't feel very good, so can you tell me that you want? You don't need to know about this, Pepper. Interrupting Pepper, Tony continued, I wanted to eat a hamburger before holding a press conference, but now I have it, so, Pepper let's hold a press conference. But, you should go to the hospital first. Little Pepper looked worried. Don't worry, there is a life healing device, these traumas are not important things now. At this point, after seeing Pepper's still worried eyes, Tony said with a little twitching, you don't want me to go to the psychological doctor. Ignoring Tony's expression, 
Pepper nodded subconsciously, and when he saw Tony's darkened face, he reacted and panicked, ah, no, that, I'll go prepare. Let's go first, said to Leo, holding the bag containing the hamburger, Tony got into his car. Are we going, sir? Witten asked Leo in a low voice, looking at Tony who had gone away. Sighing, Leo said slowly, since Tony told me last night, he must want my support. If I don't go, there will be no one to support him, so he will be very upset. Lonely. After finishing speaking, he walked straight to the car. The safe return of the head of Stark Industries is big news for every news media, so when Pepper sent out the news of holding a press conference, those reporters were like sharks smelling blood, swarmed over time. For Leo, he rarely appeared in front of the camera, but this did not prevent the media from being curious about him, so when Leo appeared, it still caused a lot of commotion, only because he was Stark's reporter today due to the reception, they restrained their emotions one after another. After they were ready to visit Leo directly after visiting Tony, they held up their equipment and rushed towards Tony. After the reporters around him left, Leo saw a familiar figure beside Pepper. Phil, looking at Agent Phil standing with Pepper, Leo raised his eyebrows and walked over. Hearing the sound, Phil turned around, and when he saw Leo, a friendly smile appeared on his face. Mr. Leo, hello, this is the consistent impression given to Leo by Shield, so Leo said directly, Phil, what do you want? He wants to ask how Tony escaped. Before Phil could open his mouth, Little Pepper directly said why Phil came. Phil could only show a helpless smile and looked at Leo. Mr. Leo, that huge pothole really shocked us. Thinking of the huge pothole left in the desert, the entire interior turned into a crystal-like huge pothole, Phil sincerely praised. You guys are really well informed. But did you get Tony's attention? About this, we have to admit it. You know, that thing on him is really, so special. Hearing what Leo said, Phil admitted generously, this is a person who is very communicative. A person with means is very accurate about what kind of person uses what kind of communication method, so he knows that for a person like Leo who hates deception so much, lying is not a good way of communication. Okay, this is a matter between you and Tony, and I will not participate. Leo said softly, looking at Tony who was already sitting under the podium. At this time, Tony didn't have the usual demeanor, and his whole body carried a kind of sad and dignified aura. Sit on the ground. Didn't Tony stand tall that time, watching the group of people below look up to him and exclaim at him? And he just needs to smile indifferently, but this time, with guilt for those who died under Stark's weapons, he sat down and said in an alternative way, I don't deserve this time stand so high. Leo, who understood Tony's mood, smiled at Tony who was munching on a burger, and his eyes were full of support. What are you talking about? Listening to the conversation between the two, Pepper asked Phil in a daze. Blinking his innocent eyes, Phil smiled, this is a secret between men. But, just when Little Pepper was unwilling to continue asking, the whole reception scene fell silent instantly, and then Tony's voice spread throughout the hall. Can everyone sit down? This way I can be more casual. Hearing Tony's words, all the reporters at the scene smiled. They were a little helpless for Tony's bad temper, so they could only squat on the ground, waiting for the man who was watching the audience to say some explosive news, okay let their wages at the end of the month go up a bit. Standing quietly, Leo and Welton behind him stood quietly watching from a distance, and did not squat on the ground like everyone else, so Leo saw many scenes that others could not see, for example, Obadiah, who was sitting on the ground like Tony, looked at Tony secretly with cold and angry eyes. It seems that he is very unhappy about Tony's return, it seems that it is necessary to remind Tony again. Holding his chin, Leo thought quietly. I haven't seen my father for the last time. In fact, I want to ask him, what is his view on the production of arms? Has he been contradictory? Has he been shaken, or is he a fearless man like the media reported? Iron Man, I saw young soldiers killed died with the weapons I meant to protect them, and I found that I was becoming a part of this irresponsible world. Hearing Tony's words, people familiar with him have already heard some signs of something wrong, and their faces became serious, especially Obadiah, who was sitting next to him, with a shiny bald head, seemed to be able to see the black air haunted. Well, Mr. Stark, what happened over there? Listening to this unusual Stark speech, the reporters stammered and asked questions as if they were frightened. 
Hearing the reporter's question, Tony paused, avoided the question, stood up, walked towards the podium, and said, I'm sober, and I realize that besides making weapons, I can also contribute to the world. More. After Tony walked to the podium, straightened his body, he said a decision that shocked everyone to the extreme in a firm voice. I have decided to close Stark's arms department. Effective immediately. Stark closes the weapons department. When the news came out of Tony's mouth, it was like a nuclear bomb had been detonated, causing the heads of the people present to buzz. Immediately, those reporters seemed to be crazy, holding up the recording and video equipment in their hands and pushing towards Tony. Go, try to get further information. Obadiah's face sank like water, standing in front of Tony, the anger in his eyes seemed to turn into substance, and he smiled angrily at the reporters rushing up, everyone has new news, so. Leo didn't have the slightest interest in what Obadiah said, but when Tony looked over, he stretched out his thumb to Tony, which dared to deny the courage of his achievements after struggling for so long, let Leo O have to admire. Looking at Leo's thumbs up, Tony smiled. When everyone is against, there is still a friend who supports you and understands you. This feeling of not being alone in the critical moment, the way forward, Tony feel very satisfied. Following Tony's gaze, those reporters also looked at Leo. When they saw Leo's still raised thumb, their expressions were different, wondering whether these two business magnates had any tricky thoughts, they all asked this scene was filmed. Let's go, Witten. I don't want to be surrounded for a while. Withdrawing his hand, he whispered something to Whedon beside him, then smiled contemptuously at Obadiah, who had cold eyes, and strode away under the complicated gazes of all the reporters. At this time, Leo got in the car. Picking up Xingye who rushed up to him as soon as he got into the car, he picked it up from his shoulder and put it on his lap. Hearing Xingye complaining in his mind, Leo smiled, rubbed Xingye's little head, and said with a smile, it's inconvenient for so many people take you in, if you want to go in next time, you should change into something else. Sir, are we going home? As the most loyal driver to Leo, he knew that Xingye had his own thoughts, so he didn't feel uncomfortable when he saw Leo talking to a cat, surprise. Seeing the direction in which Tony left from the press conference, Leo squeezed his forehead and said, no, wait a little longer. Yes, Witten replied and the whole car fell silent until half an hour later, it was interrupted by the ringing of the mobile phone. There, Leo, Tony's voice was full of exhaustion. Still waiting for you, you really understand me. Hearing Leo's words, Tony's mustache twitched twice, and after a sigh of emotion, he said bluntly, come pick me up at Stark's door, let's go to the old place, I need to relax. After hanging up the phone, Leo smiled and said to Witten, go pick up Tony at Stark's door, and then go to the old local restaurant in Chinatown. The old place, a Chinese restaurant in Chinatown, is a very authentic Sichuan cuisine restaurant. This is the place where Leo found 10 years ago when he wanted to eat Chinese food. The owner, chef and waiter are all the same person, a stubborn 60-year-old and old man surnamed Song. The restaurant in the old place is not big, with less than meters of space, except for a private room, there are only four tables, but because of the extremely delicious taste, it is extremely popular, and it only accepts reservations. The stubborn old man Song has a stubborn principle that he only serves the Chinese, but Leo is an exception, because he is a friend of the old man Song. After the nurse gave it to him, the two became close friends who talked about everything. When Leo saw Ethan who was following Tony, Leo raised his eyebrows, moved in his heart, and teleported directly to X Academy, and brought the confused Logan over without any explanation, and then a group of people sat down. With Leo's car, came to the, old place. Old song. Pushing open the glass door of the old place, a spicy and spicy smell hits the brain, making people feel comfortable all over. Hearing Leo's cry, an old man with a ruddy face, a slightly protruding belly, and a white chef's hat ran out of the kitchen after wiping his hands. When he saw Leo, a bright smile appeared on Yuan Yuan's face. Ha ha, your kid is here, I miss your cooking, bring friends to taste it. Leo didn't dislike the oil stains on the old man's body at all, after giving him a big hug, he pointed to Logan and his party who were following behind. After giving Leo a blank look, old man Song shook his head helplessly, glared at Tony and the others, and said, that's you. If anyone else breaks my rules, I'll be kicked out long ago. 
Because Leo and Old Man Song were talking in Chinese, Logan and the others didn't understand their conversation. Logan pulled out the cigar in his mouth, looked at Ethan who was more talkative, and asked, what did they say? What is it? Mandarin, I'm not familiar with it, but it should mean that we can eat here because of Tuolio. Thinking about the words, Ethan raised his glasses and said with some uncertainty. Knowing that Logan was Leo's friend, Tony patted Logan on the shoulder familiarly, with a helpless expression on his face. Don't guess, buddy, it's really like this. If it weren't for Leo, this stubborn old man would never serve foreigners like us, even if I am a regular customer who has eaten here dozens of times. Boy Tony, if it wasn't for Leo, I wouldn't have let you into my restaurant. Hearing Tony's words, Old Man Song widened his eyes. Hey, old man, I'm Tony Stark, a billionaire, if you offend me, I'll buy your shitty place. Tony put on a straight face on purpose, pretending to be angry. Yes, even if I burn it, I won't sell it to you. With a disdainful smile, Old Man Song walked into the kitchen. Ha ha, Tony laughed happily when he heard Old Man Song's words. Regardless of his identity, whether he is a billionaire, or whether he is a genius Tony, this is why Tony likes to come here. Here he ignored the reporters who had been staring at him, this was the most comfortable place for him to stay besides the laboratory and his own home. Let's go. As if coming to his own home, Leo directly hung a sign of temporary closure on the door, and led Logan and his party to the private room. Leo, you just pulled me here without saying a word, just to let me eat in. Man, you should know that the bald professor even arranged a class for me in the afternoon. Exhaling the smoke in his mouth, Logan flicked the soot. You're a teacher, it doesn't look like it. Looking at Logan with a ferocious expression, like a wild wolf, Tony stroked his mustache with a dazed look on his face. Ha ha, he's really not an ordinary teacher. Leo smiled, paused, first showed an apologetic expression to Ethan on the opposite side, and then said seriously to Tony and Logan, as my best two of my friends, coming here today, apart from letting Tony relax, this is just an ordinary gathering among friends. A gathering of friends. Hearing Leo's words, Logan and Tony's hearts were moved, and their faces were filled with sorrow. It's been a long time since they met this purposeless gathering of friends. Thinking of this, the corners of their mouths evoked a happy smile at the same time, and they looked happy. The red hot peppers, the sizzling sound of hot oil poured on the fat slices of meat, and the red and attractive dishes were brought up by Lao Song. It was the first time I saw this kind of red charm and delicacy. Ethan couldn't help swallowing. After serving the last dish, Lao Song wiped his hands, changed into clean casual clothes, and sat down beside Leo. When eating in the old place, you must use the tableware unique to the Chinese people. Of course, because Lao Song only cooks for the Chinese, there are only chopsticks here. When Lao Song brought the two thin bamboo chopsticks and distributed them to everyone, after knowing that they were for eating, Logan and Ethan looked black. Seeing this, Tony smiled. Having eaten here many times, he picked up a piece of fat boiled meat slices and fed them into his mouth with a non standard movement. He said exaggeratedly, Okay, eat. Logan and Ethan held the chopsticks like sticks, and the pinched veins burst out, but they didn't catch a piece of meat. The irritable Logan looked at the delicious food in front of him, bared his teeth, and said angrily, What a strange tool, I want to use my claws. This is not a strange tool. These chopsticks have a lot of meaning. Picking up the chopsticks in his hand, Leo smiled lightly, pointing to the shape of the chopsticks with a circle on the top and bottom and said, One circle and one side are in line with Wabwo. It is a traditional idea that the sky is round and the earth is round, and the two ends represent the sky and the earth. They even use sharp knives and forks for eating, how can they understand the meaning of tolerance contained in the chopsticks? Poured a glass of authentic Wagwo Baiju for himself and Leo, and Lao Song looked disdainful. Ha ha, Ethan, who had been struggling with the meat at this time, smiled happily, pierced a piece of meat with his chopsticks, put it in his mouth, chewed it twice, showing a satisfied expression. Seeing this, Logan pursed his lips, and carefully observed the movements of Leo and Lao Song. After seeing Leo's intentional demonstration for him, Logan smiled confidently, and even clamped them effortlessly. Yo, your friend is learning so fast. Seeing Logan's actions, Lao Song was a little surprised. 
Of course, he has mastered all kinds of fighting skills, as long as he masters the posture, of course he will learn this simple force exerting technique. Leo added silently in his heart. Delicious. Giving a generous praise to old song, Logan curiously took the white wine on the table, poured himself a glass, took a sip, his eyes lit up, and pushed the beer in front of him to the table. Sighed. Mutants, ordinary humans, billionaires, restaurant owners, it's hard to imagine that people with these huge status gaps would get together and get along happily. After drinking for three rounds, Tony and Ethan were a little drunk. Tony held his chin and poured beer into his mouth while saying, For so many years, I have always believed that the weapons I made are used to maintain peace. Yes, but I didn't expect. It seems that the life path ahead of you is going crooked. Lao Song, who had drunk a lot of wine and blushed a little, said bluntly. Yeah, it's gone astray. Tony, who was calm in front of the media in the morning, now has a desolate expression. Logan snatched the little baiju left in front of Lao Song, poured it into his cup with pride under Lao Song's angry eyes, and said leisurely, you still have a long way to go. You still have a long way to go. There is a choice. Tony, who has always been unrestrained, arrogant and arrogant, here, in front of his friends, let go of his usual arrogance, revealing a fragile side that has never been seen by anyone. You're right, Leo, Obadiah has hurt too many people behind my back with the arms deals I made with Stark. It's ridiculous that I didn't care about it before. Speaking of this, in a drunken state, Tony looked angry. After shaking his body, Lao Song stood up, gestured for me to go to the toilet, and said, you are so pitiful. I'm pitiful. Tony repeated with drooping drunken eyes, and then shouted, I'm Tony, Stark, Stark's master, a billionaire. How can I be pitiful? Since you believe that Stark is yours, you must take responsibility for what happened in your own territory. Paused, and after seeing Tony's thoughtful expression, he continued, Since you have realized your mistakes, then work hard to correct them. You are still young. Isn't the decision you made today the first step in your corrections? With that said, Lao Song pointed to the TV in the private room that was broadcasting the news about Tony's shutdown of the weapons department and staggered out. My territory, my responsibility. Tony murmured. Tony, you don't have to be confused. Since it is your own decision, even if other people don't understand, you have to stick to it. You have to go your own way. If you believe that Obadiah used Stark to commit the crime wrong, as the master of Stark, it is your responsibility to correct those mistakes. Although I don't know exactly what happened, but regarding your decision, I think everyone present will support you. Logan swallowed the last sip of wine with a heroic expression on his face. Hearing Logan's words, Tony's face was moved, the confusion in his eyes disappeared, and the last trace of hesitation in his heart disappeared. He raised the wine glass in his hand and said with a smile, thank you. With a clear beep, Leo picked up the mobile phone on the table, smiled, and said to the stunned Tony, acknowledge your mistake, thank you, Tony, I recorded everything. Gritting his teeth, Tony said word for word, you cunning guy. Just take it as a reward for enlightening you. Under Tony's angry gaze, Leo put the phone in his pocket unhurriedly. Please, Stark will need your enlightenment. The doubts disappeared, and Tony returned to his true colors. I still like the Tony just now. Logan smiled and lit a cigar. For a man's liking, I'm still insensitive. Waving his hand, Tony's mustache trembled. Hearing this, Ethan also smiled slightly. At this moment, a huge roar came in, and then Lao Song's angry shout sounded outside the private room, my restaurant. You bloody fools, fight outside. Hearing this sound, Leo and Logan rushed out, while Tony and Ethan, who were a little drunk, also stood up quickly and rushed out of the private room. Looking at the big hole in the wall and the fat man lying on the floor that looks more like a meatball than a human, Leo who rushed out was stunned for a moment, and when he saw the strong man standing in front of the fat man, Leo cried out in surprise, meatball. Duke. The expressionless, strong man like a robot didn't pay attention to Ilio's cry, but walked indifferently towards his mission target, the fat man lying on the ground. This is not Duke. Logan narrowed his eyes, denying Leo's opinion. Hearing this, Leo was stunned for a moment, and after looking at the strong figure that was somewhat inconsistent with the meaty Duke he had seen before, and his face that was much younger than Duke, he affirmed Logan's statement. Ah, at this moment, the fat man who was lying on the ground moved a bit, 
and then got up with his arms that were a bit thick and short compared to his round body. Looking at the man walking towards him, his face was full of fat. His face was full of fear and anger. The fat man trembling with anger, pointed at the wooden barrel rolled under the man's feet, and said, you actually knocked over the food that I regard as life. Silently, the strong man who looked very similar to Meatball Duke had a dumb expression on his face. After kicking the wooden bucket full of rice away, he continued to walk towards the fat man. Ah, I'm so mad, the fat man yelled angrily. With a weight of 700 kilograms, he bumped into the man with the blank face with rumbling steps. Seeing this, the man with the blank face also slightly lowered his body, not to be outdone, he went to the fat man. With a loud, boom, the fat man was knocked into the air by the man again. Seeing this scene, Logan said to Leo solemnly, exactly the same ability as Duke. It is necessary to check. Leo nodded and responded. At this moment, in a corner that Leo and the others couldn't see, a beautiful woman with a hot figure and a temptation was quietly watching everything that happened in the restaurant. When she saw Leo standing behind Logan who was together, there was a hint of thought in his cold and charming eyes, and he murmured, it feels so familiar. Kara, how's it going? Did you catch the target? Listening to Sen Han's figure coming from the communicator, the woman named Kara said dumbly, report to General Stryker, the Duke No Clone Trooper is fighting with him, but there is a man named Leo. Mutants and the X weapon in the file. Weapon X, Leo, they got together again. It's really troublesome, you are everywhere, the owner of the EO group, if you don't care about your current mutant power and identity, hum. The other end of the communicator striker, who heard Kara's report, had an extremely gloomy face. Thinking of this, he said unwillingly, the current cloning plan cannot be exposed, let the clone troopers withdraw. Yes, General, responding, Kara used her telepathy ability, which had been upgraded to level 3, to contact the blank-looking clone soldier. After receiving the order, the clone soldier paused, turned around and left without hesitation, but at this moment, the fat man who was knocked into the air underwent an astonishing change, and his astonishingly fat body was as swift as a steaming balloon. It disappeared, and then under the stunned eyes of everyone, a round fat man turned into a handsome young man. Ethan, are we drunk? I don't think so, Stark. Pay me back. With a low cry, the handsome young man stomped heavily on the floor, leaving a footprint in Lao Song's distressed eyes, and rushed towards him like a cannonball. The Duke cloned soldier, and then the two rolled on the ground, fighting all the way, and rushed out into the street. The battle between the two has now caused chaos, so in order to avoid hurting the innocent, Leo can only shoot. That fat man's strength has become stronger. Leo whispered, nodded to Logan and Tony, and signaled that he wanted to settle the battle. After a flash, he disappeared. The next moment, the figure of the Black Emperor appeared on the street. Amidst the cries of, Black Emperor, from the surrounding crowd, Leo separated the two entangled two people, directly suppressed the young man who wanted to continue fighting, and stomped on the strong man who looked like Duke. He stepped down and asked, Who are you? Hearing Leo's words, the strong man under his feet hadn't spoken yet, but Shen Rui, who recognized Leo's identity, had a look of distress on his face, and then yelled, Black Emperor. My name is Shen Rui, from Wabuo, unmarried, it was he who knocked over my crap for no reason. I am the victim and he said coldly that he would arrest me, it was an order or something. Quote dot. He ignored the man who yelled and claimed to be Shen Rui, but when he heard the word, order, Leo looked at the strong man who was still struggling under his feet with a thoughtful expression. General, the clone soldier was subdued by the hero Black Emperor. Seeing this scene, Kara, who watched quietly from a distance, continued to report to Stryker dutifully. Stryker almost threw off the communicator in his hand angrily, and said in a cold tone, let him detonate the bomb in his body. It's better than falling into someone else's hands. Yes, General. In response, Carla's cold and numb eyes flashed a faint sense of intolerance, and finally gave the clone soldier the order to self-destruct. Danger. Feeling the sudden weakening of the struggling man under his feet, Leo thought, and took the man under his feet, and teleported directly into the air. Boom. A dazzling, firework, bloomed in the air, watching the man in the explosion turn into ashes in an instant, Leo, who resisted the impact with his thoughts, looked a little unhappy, and then disappeared. Looking around, seeing that everyone was attracted by the sudden explosion, 
Shen Rui, who was lying on the ground, quietly got up, with a look of joy on his face, and planned to slip away quietly, but he didn't want to just turn around and look at the explosion. Arriving at Logan smoking a cigar. It's been. As soon as this thought came to his mind, the strength gained from burning fat had already faded, and he saw a fist that was getting bigger and bigger at the moment when he was a little weak. Leo, who disappeared in the air, appeared in the old local restaurant in the next moment. Looking at the young man who was knocked unconscious by Logan's punch, his face softened. This is the last clue to find out the identity of the person who has been reduced to ashes. Up. When he was about to drag the young man into the restaurant, Logan looked suspiciously at a dark corner of the street, where his beast perception felt a familiar gaze, but when he looked, he did not find some figure shook his head. After seeing the police car approaching, he didn't hesitate any longer and dragged the young man directly to the restaurant. General, the mission target has fallen into the hands of Weapon X. Avoiding Logan's gaze, Kara continued to report the latest situation to Stryker. Withdraw, although they won't find anything, if they notice it again, it will not be conducive to the development of the plan. Take a break and go to capture the next target. It's the general. Responding, Kara hung up the communicator, looked at the direction where Logan disappeared, and was full of doubts in his eyes again but then saw the police car that had stopped in front of the old place finally, the doubt in his eyes was covered by ice cold again, and he left slowly. Shen Rui's ability is to convert food into fat, and then use the burned fat to gain superhuman strength during battles. Because of his ability, he eats a lot, and ordinary places will not hire him, so he cherishes every bit of food. I don't know why he arrested me. I don't know him at all. I was just enjoying the food I earned from part-time jobs, and he rushed over ferociously and said he wanted to arrest me. Looking at Logan's fierce eyes, Shen Rui answered Leo's question in a low voice. What he said is true. Leo nodded as he let go of the hand on Shen Rui's shoulder and withdrew his telepathic ability. Looking at the dilapidated old local restaurant that had been destroyed by their fighting, Tony, who was angry because there was one less place to stay at home, said nonchalantly, so should we send this kid to the police station now? No, hearing this, Shen Rui howled miserably. Forget it, since this kid is from China like me, let him go. Listening to Lao Song's words, Shen Rui was very moved, thank you, old man. However, you have to stay here and work to compensate for the things you destroyed. Do you care about the food? Shen Rui's eyes lit up when he heard this. One meal, one barrel. Pointing to the wooden barrel with a capacity of 30 liters on the ground, Song Lao's smile was like an angel's smile in Shen Rui's eyes at the moment. Now that Lao Song and the young man have reached a consensus, and Leo has confirmed through his weak telepathy that this kid is not a bad guy with evil intentions, then they don't need to participate in this matter, and immediately, Leo said, Old Song, I'll contact you right away to help you fix this place, and we'll leave first. Okay, I'm not being polite this may save a lot of money. Ha ha. With a hearty smile, Lao Song patted Leo with a happy face. After calling Whedon in the nearby parking lot and asking him to drop Tony and Ethan back, Leo teleported Logan back to X school. Just now you showed your mutant ability in front of that old song, you are not afraid. Hearing this, Leo smiled and said with certainty, he already knew my abilities. Although he is an ordinary person, he has no other views on mutants. He is a trustworthy person. You don't worry. That's good. About that mutant who looks like Duke, my bestial instincts tell me it's a conspiracy. With a flash of coldness in his eyes, Leo said lightly, although I don't have any clues now, I think of someone when it comes to arresting mutants. Strike. With doubts, Logan said the answer in Leo's heart. It seems that we should pay more attention to Mr. Stryker who has been quietly disappearing from people's sight these years. I'll tell Professor X about it, and Academy X will also pay attention. Looking at Logan, who has restrained his irritability a lot because he stayed at the X Academy to teach mutant children, Leo sighed, you have changed a lot. If you heard Stryker in the past, you would definitely it's going to go crazy. But I'm still Wolverine. Logan smiled slightly like a ferocious wolf ready to go. Let's go. Come and see old Paul when you have time. He often talks about you. Older people can chat better together. Then do you have to call me uncle? Logan laughed. Hearing this, Leo froze and disappeared without a word. Tony and Stark returned, 
and the storm that announced the closure of Stark's weapons department was still raging. Stark Industries started with arms, and such a manufacturing company that mainly focuses on arms suddenly announced the closure of the arms department, which was a fatal blow to the entire Stark. The stock price of Stark Industries fell again and again. Regarding the disastrous consequences caused by Tony's, willful, behavior, basically everyone except Leo thought that Tony and Stark had lost their minds this time. Even Tony Pepper's close assistant, Pepper doesn't quite understand Tony's behavior. Of course, what Tony hates the most is Obadiah, who has long regarded Stark Industries as his own personal property. He can't help Tony's behavior of turning his own Stark Industries into a mess. Endure, so this bald guy recently made a small move behind his back, relying on the power of the board of directors, and temporarily drove Tony from the position of the owner of Stark Industries. Regarding Obadiah's small actions, Tony didn't know about it. Regarding Obadiah, although Tony was angry at him for using Stark to conduct illegal arms transactions, Tony was not yet completely disappointed with him. Watching Tony put a rough leg spray device on his calf with the help of the machine, Leo, who accepted Tony's invitation, stood aside, folded his arms, and said leisurely, it seems that you have been very idle recently. After Tony ordered Jarvis to write down the experimental records, he said to Leo, come on, don't make sarcastic remarks, you are not ignorant of my current situation. By the way, are you so relieved to let Obadiah temporarily manage Stark? Tony carefully adjusted the spraying device under his feet. After hearing Leo's words, he raised his head and said seriously, after all, he watched me grow up. For him, I plan to give him another chance, and I can also take this opportunity to study my suit, Mark II. Tony, regarding your expulsion from Stark, the EO group has received some news. As a friend, I have to remind you that it is the result of Obadiah's manipulation of the board of directors. Hearing Leo's words, Tony paused slightly, and smiled wryly, this is really bad news. Then he said solemnly, I will pay attention, and it won't happen again that he uses Stark it's about the illegal arms trade. I hope so, otherwise, your previous closing of Stark's weapons department will become a joke. Leo, can you have some confidence in me? Tony tried to move his feet after connecting the jets on his feet to the arc reactor on his chest, and continued, I made the second generation of Mark to prevent such what happened, those weapons that Stark sold illegally, as the owner, I have the right to destroy them and I will destroy them without any omission. Looking at the leg device on Tony's calf, which is still adjusting the power system, Leo said with a smile, then, you have to work hard, this is not a small project. That's why I need help. That's why I asked you to come. Tony looked at Leo with a serious expression. Let me help you destroy those weapons. No, I want to destroy them myself. You just need to use the power of the EO group to help me find out. Those illegal weapons have appeared there. I will grasp the news from Stark Industries. Originally, I asked Rhodes to help, but unfortunately. Leo raised his eyebrows, ignoring the disappointed look on Tony's face, and directly added, it's a pity that you, willfully, shut down the weapons department and made him angry. Can't you save me some face? Tony said, and after giving his too simple and intelligent mechanical arm assistants the task of shooting and extinguishing the fire, he said to Leo with a hint of excitement, now, it's a magical moment to witness. Magic moment. It's really amazing. Watching Tony bounce directly to the wall by the reflection force of the spray device, that handsome face instantly changed into a peach blossom. Leo said, it's really amazing. Squatting beside Tony, Leo's smiling face cramped up. He helped Tony up, and while treating him, he sneered mercilessly, it's really amazing. Tony touched his face, and seeing that he had recovered, he said indifferently, this, experiment, it's inevitable that there will be accidents. Then, seeing Leo's still upturned mouth, Tony suddenly became suspicious. According to your ability, you should be able to stop me before I hit it. Really, Leo's eyes fluttered, and he said with a smirk, that's to make you get used to these pains earlier. When Mark is made, I'll let you try these pains, Tony said viciously. Then I'll wait and see. By the way, doesn't Ethan live here? Why haven't I seen him? Leo still had a deep impression of this refined man who had only met a few times. He said he wasn't used to living here, and after I arranged him a job in Stark, he moved out. A wise choice. Raising his eyebrows, Leo teased, and then said, 
you continue to experiment, and I will help you pay attention to those illegal weapons transactions. After the words fell, they disappeared. Thank you, friend. Thank you for giving me the strength to persevere when no one supports me. Seeing Leo disappear, Tony whispered to himself how moved Leo had brought him. I.O. Manor. Since returning from Tony's house that day, Leo told Bell to pay attention to the illegally traded weapons that Stark was circulating outside, and Leo was idle again. On weekdays, in addition to teaching his students the knowledge of Eddie's magic runes, he continued to strengthen his communication with Zanpakuto. In addition, he stayed with Emma, like this, until more than half a month finally, the peaceful life was interrupted by an unexpected guest one night. Buzzing, the phone rang, Xingye lying on Leo's lap moved his ears, stood up, jumped a few times, rolled up the phone with his tail and handed it to Leo, Leo took the phone with a smile, looked following the word Tony displayed on the phone, he connected the call. Leo, time to show you my mark too. Your suit will be ready so soon. The speed is still pretty fast. Of course, I'm in my garage now, just come here directly. Tony's tone was full of confidence and excitement. Hearing the excitement in Tony's tone, Leo raised his eyebrows. The next moment, Leo disappeared directly into his home with Starry Knight with a look of curiosity on his face. Looking at the Silver Iron Man with his back turned to him, Leo put the mobile phone still in his hand into his pocket, and said, this is your mark too. Hearing Leo's voice, the Silver Iron Man turned around, shrugged, and then Tony's voice came from inside. Hey, man, can you stop appearing behind me in an instant, like this, well it scared me, I haven't hung up the communication yet. Leo reached out and knocked on the silver shell, making a clanging sound, showing a questioning expression. Looks good, have you tested it? The test is coming soon, so I let you come. It's safer. I found that you are getting thicker and thicker. Do you still need to be polite to you? Tony's tone of reason made Leo help his forehead helplessly. Hey, hey, kitty, get rid of your dangerous claws. Watching Xingye curiously extend a small dark paw to his Mark II, Tony jumped back. Coward, seeing Tony's performance, a small sign appeared on Xingyi's tail again, and then sent it over with a look of disdain. Tony was already somewhat immune to the cat's contempt. After ignoring Xingyi's contemptuous expression, he said to Leo with a hint of provocation, would you like to fly during the test? Then you're doomed, Leo smiled lightly, and Xingyi instantly turned into a black battle suit. Then come, as soon as the voice fell, Bright flames shot out from the hands and feet of the silver steel suit, and then flew out along the vehicle passage of the garage with a roar. Seeing this, Leo smiled, follow up. As for flying, Leo has used his own ability to fly too many times, so he has long been used to the feeling of flying in the air, but Tony, the first time he used the suit to fly, is like a child who got his favorite toy. Excited roars continued in the air. Following Tony leisurely, Watching the test so far went smoothly, Leo was very happy for his friend's success. At this moment, Tony suddenly turned around and flew vertically upwards. Make a provocative gesture. Leo froze for a moment, shook his head with a smile, a silver electric glow shone from his body, then his speed increased again, and he still followed behind Tony leisurely. As the altitude increased, Leo, who was following Tony, keenly observed that white frost began to appear on Mark II's body, and then he was taken aback, showing a funny expression, and stopped the flying figure. One, two, three. As Leo silently counted to three, a figure waving arms and legs in the air fell down in front of Leo. Seeing this, Leo showed a genuine expression. Leo, I'm frozen. Hearing Tony's anxious shouts, Leo still had a relaxed expression on his face, followed Tony's falling speed, followed Tony's side, shrugged his shoulders, and said with a smile, is there any more to compare? Hey, buddy, you are taking advantage of others. Hearing what Leo said, Tony in the steel suit yelled, and at the same time began to manually open the ailerons of the suit. Crash, with the opening of the ailerons, the ice cubes frozen on the surface of the suit were shattered, but due to the freezing, the power system still did not return to normal, so Tony still fell downwards. Looking at Leo who was still following him with a smiling expression on his face, Tony's stubborn temper came up, and he yelled, it's impossible for Stark to admit defeat. After a slight pause, in a rogue voice, said firmly, I don't believe you will watch me fall to my death. Well, Leo really wouldn't just watch Tony fall to his death, 
so when he was approaching the ground, Leo stretched out his hand and pressed on the Mark II, and said with a smile, your trick is really a rogue. As soon as the voice fell, when he was about to use teleportation to take Tony back, Mark II spewed out bright flames again, threw a dangerous arc towards the ground, raised up with Tony's excited roar, and then went far away. The moonlight was bright, and two galloping figures were chasing after each other in the air. While arousing waves of sound that pierced the air, they left behind streaks of gorgeous flames and lightning. Although Tony's Mark II is very fast and even broke the sound barrier at one point, Leo's Starry Night can reach times the speed of sound with its own speed alone, let alone Leo's acceleration with his own lightning energy. In the end, Leo reached the rooftop of Tony's house one step ahead of Tony. Looking at Leo standing on the roof of his house, Tony couldn't help feeling startled by Leo's powerful strength. Before, he knew that Leo was very powerful, but he didn't have a specific concept, but Leo's current speed however, he has learned the tip of the iceberg of Leo's power. His own mark can't compare to Leo, and the most terrifying thing is that he still looks like he still has the strength to look at Leo. You are such a pervert, Tony exclaimed, directly extinguished Mark's power unit, and fell from the sky, but unexpectedly, Mark's weight was surprisingly heavy, directly smashed through the roof, and then went straight down until he fell to the ground. The underground garage stopped after smashing a sports car. Hu, whistle leisurely, and after Xingye changed back into a cat form and lay back on his shoulders, he jumped down from the hole Tony made with a relaxed expression. This landing posture is really beautiful. Just a joke, and mentioned Tony wearing the Mark II with his mind, Leo opened Tony's steel mask, looked at Tony who was still a little dizzy, smiled, reached out and pressed Tony, and took him back to his experiment in the room. Help him take off this battle suit, Leo said to Jarvis who was still on standby, and sat down. Ha, huh. after a few breaths, Tony, who took off his steel suit, shook his head and stood up, looked at Leo who was sitting on the side, pointed to himself and said, help me heal, I feel my brains are coming out of the wound in the back of the brain. Hearing this, Leo, who was too lazy to move, directly used his thoughts to control Tony to pull him in front of him, turned around Tony, looked at the big swollen lump on Tony's head, and a golden healing light appeared on his hand, almost in the blink of an eye, the swollen big bag disappeared. Hey, you can't use your ability to treat me like this in the future, it makes me look like a girl who can't resist the mob. No girl would have grown such a beard as you. Your healing ability is much stronger than the life healing device you developed. Pointing to the life healing device on his wrist, Tony asked with curiosity, what kind of injury can your healing ability be able to heal? Basically, it can treat all traumas, but if you lose an arm or a leg, I can't help you regenerate it. Is that so? Hearing what Leo said, Tony whispered, and gave up the idea of letting Leo use his own ability to heal his chest, because even if his chest was healed, those shrapnel would still remain in his body, and would still be harmful to him. His life is threatened. Looking at Tony who fell silent, Leo thought about it and said, as for your steel suit, if you engrave magic runes, it will be much stronger. If you need it, tell me. Ha ha, of course, but now my mark still has a lot of room for improvement. When I need your knowledge of magic technology, I will not let you go. Hearing Leo's words, Tony put the matter on his chest behind him, winked, and then said seriously to Jarvis, Jarvis, the Mark I file needs to be improved this time. Looking at Tony who continued to fall into the research state, Leo quietly disappeared into Tony's laboratory with a helpless smile. The arms trading industry has always been a violent industry, let alone illegal trading, so Obadiah is absolutely reluctant to part with the benefits in front of him, so he once again, and for the last time, failed Tony's last little hope for him. Watching the news about Iron Man destroying Stark weapons in the Middle East, Leo ordered Bell to pass the recently found illegal transaction information to Tony, and then turned off the TV. While Tony was busy destroying Stark's weapon used for terrorist operations, Obadiah, who now holds Stark Enterprises, was not idle, because a transaction call from the Ten Rings made him set the target again. On Tony, who had been squeezed out of Stark by him. Steel armor for single-player combat. Looking at the, Mark, one which had been shattered into pieces, obtained through the arms trade with the Ten Rings, Obadiah touched his bald head, and a strange expression appeared in his eyes. Called the Flame of Ambition. This individual weapon can help Stark Industries become the overlord of the entire arms industry. 
Tony, you are really a genius. But you are too naive. After praise, Obadiah smiled sinisterly. It seems that there is no it is still a good choice to break with you completely, is the core of the steel armor, the miniature arc reactor. Hee <laughs> hee, it seems that it is time to take some time to visit my dear nephew. Tony's house, in the laboratory. Tony has been very busy recently, because the weapons made by Stark, after he closed the weapons department, still appeared in the chaotic area in a steady stream, bringing deep fear to the ordinary people. Obadiah, at the thought of this name, Tony's anger called disappointment was burning, and he was burning like he was going to lose his mind. Giving Obadiah one last chance, he was wrong again in this way, and it was outrageously wrong. Even after he left Stark, Obadiah was labeled as a mentally traumatized person to isolate him. He has the opportunity to take over Stark again, and because of the mental trauma, he can't even enter Stark. As soon as he appears in Stark, those security personnel who have been told by Obadiah will send him directly to a mental hospital. The illegal weapons trade is still going on, and now that he can't take Stark back for the time being, he can only try his best to destroy those illegally traded weapons. Although Leo provided him with a lot of information on illegal transactions, it was only a small part of the overall transaction base, so he felt that it was necessary to directly obtain the latest information on all weapon transactions. The transportation of weapons will solve those illegal transactions. If you want to get these transaction information, apart from Obadiah's side, only the computer with the highest authorization in my office can find it, but I can't get into the office, so I have to ask someone for help, then looking for. Pepper. Tony was thinking about it. At this moment, Pepper Pepper walked into his laboratory with a cup of coffee. Looking at Pepper, Tony's eyes lit up, and he found a suitable candidate. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.